Good evening, everyone. Welcome to FPL Black Box ahead of game week 30. It feels like we've been out of action for weeks, and that's because we have. But so much has happened, and we've got so much to talk about. Mark's not here. It's a bit of a strange trio this week. I don't think we've ever done a stream with the three of us before, so we'll see how this goes. Let's say hello to Andy, Mr. FPL Mode. How are you doing, Andy? Yeah, not too bad, thank you. It's a strange trio. You yeah. could have like, picked us up a little bit there. Strange mate. looking. Yeah. Strange. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> it is. And we've got Mr. Luke, Mr. FPL Diss. He changed his Twitter handle more times than he's had hot dinners, but here he is. New 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 handle. You're back. FPL Diss. How long have you new been handle, FPL Diss for? It's been a, not... for like about a year, mate. Thanks oh. for paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, good to be on. Thank you. Um, it feels like uh, forever since I've even done a pod because even given up on my own one for the last like three months been so busy but that combined with the fact that football's gone missing mm. really I, the blank was kind of like a non-event as well so it just feels like ages since we've had FBL really yeah um, so good to get back into it I mean Andy having you on was bad enough I mean for lots of reasons but mostly <laughs> because of your rank being so good this season we've only got yeah. someone on who's ranked 2k in the world what are we playing at I know he's smashing it isn't he it would have been nice to have him on with Mark, like, you know, humble Mark a little bit, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the, that's the trio people want, I think. I'm here with my, my 511k <laughs> rank, but, you know, it's, it's, it's fine. Luke, what's been happening this year? What, what, you know, I mean, this is the year you've kind of turned to the dark side of analytics FPL and it's it's paying off, isn't it? Almost like it might work as, eh? No, I was, um, do you know what? I spent a lot of time thinking, how do I get that fax machine noise? Because I was just going to reply with that to that question because I knew it was going to come. But uh, yeah, I just followed the model and I just click a button and it, and it happens. It's all it's all them. It's nothing to do with me. So um, yeah. that, that and a bit of luck, of course. It's, it, always need that secret ingredient of luck, unfortunately. It's about to get even better, isn't it? With, uh, with FPL Review giving us chip strategy plans and all of that. I was, do you know what? We're going to talk about free hits though. And I was... I was happy with your your free hit because you you, oh, you went a little bit. You, I wasn't. You went a little bit against it. Well, I was happy with it on paper, but you went a little bit against the model, didn't you? Yeah, I mean to be fair, I have done that most of the season. I, I'm being facetious. I haven't just clicked a button, but um, I've <laughs> sort of maybe picked option two or three. Gone as wild as that, but no, I, I did do a little bit off piste, but um, I still managed to get 21, which was like the standard score for everyone who was template free hit, which is kind of <laughs> annoying because. I would have even taken like a couple of points below just to be different, like you say, but um, somehow managed to come to the same score even with a few different players. But what a shocking week. It basically came down to Moonies pretty much, maybe Fafana. Moonies and Wood and Fafana. Yeah, Wood. Yeah. I think that was about it really, wasn't it? Um, and then your mate, actually, because you managed to break 21, my mate, didn't you? My, you my mate Vitinho, yeah, we'll talk about him in a bit. I, I don't think I'll be only again this season, but if he, if he got that 10 points, he might have got a spot on the wall. But with five, I don't know if he, he's going to quite make it. But yeah, win that was... week. That, that five was a massive haul, <laughs> to be fair. Uh, that was a good pick, though. He's playing uh, right wing, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know if he played. Did he play right wing in that game as well? Yeah, or... yeah, he did. Yeah, fair enough. He, yeah, he had pick. he had a, a, a very a rare shot. He doesn't have too many of those. He does get forward. But had mm. a rare shot and yeah, got the penalty. I mean, we we will talk about free hits in a sec because it was it was a hilarious it was a hilarious week. Uh, before we get into that, I just want to give a shout out to our sponsor for this episode. And you two can sit there looking as uncomfortable as you want, but <laughs> it is of course uh, Manscaped. For anyone who's not aware of Manscaped, they are I would say the top company for male grooming products uh, in the world. Uh, they do fantastic below the belt trimmers and they also do beard trimmers. As well, they do lots of like body washes and stuff to make you smell nice. All great stuff. Uh, you can go to uk.manscape.com, use our code BLACKBOX, and you get twenty percent off. I just want to read you the the copy because I've gone a bit rogue with that introduction. I want to read you the copy that Manscaped have sent me to read. Okay, so I, I, I've mentioned this to you at the start, and you know it's it's for like an American audience, right? But this this is the copy. Yo, what's up, fellas? Spring break's knocking the door, and you know it's time to upgrade that. Below the belt game. The real flex this year is keeping your boys downstairs fresh and clean. <laughs> Nobody wants to be the guy at the pube fiesta. <laughs> That's why our bodies at Manscaped created the Lawnmower 5 Ultra, the ultimate weapon to tame those unruly bushes. How good is was that? Was that an attempt at an American accent? Yes, was. it was. Yeah, I don't know what that was. <laughs> Yes, you it just went was. lower. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just 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 become more manly. You got you got the uh, you got you got the gist of it. I watched a video of a guy chopping woods earlier, like just just out in out in the, out in the wilderness chopping woods, and 
now I feel like I could, I could feel the testosterone from that kind of radiating. Um, but yeah. I'm not sure that's what that means, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, check out Manscaped. Uh, great products. You can, don't have to buy them with the, the American accent. Use our code BLACKBOX and get 20% off as well. People enjoyed the, the American accent. Lots of nice comments in the, in the chat. And lots of comments on my hair as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. I did go to the barber's day. Hour and a half wait in the barber's today. It's very crisp. It's very tight. Mm. Mm. It's gone yeah. very short. Yeah. Me and Andy are just kind of like men of the world. We're just rags. You're just, you're yeah. looking crisp, mate. Crisp. <laughs> I don't know if I love that, but yeah. Let's go for it. Let's go for it anyway. Uh, right. Let's talk about things that happened in the international break then. There was quite a few talking points. I thought from the from the break. I think that the biggest one we'll start with was this new, not well, new mode, <laughs> new FPL mode. Uh, there it was, a fantasy challenge. Bit of a mixed reaction, I'd say, Andy, to to this. Yeah. I I saw it and just thought, kind of, yeah, it could be a bit of fun, could be not. Luke, I saw just instantly, no, <laughs> not interested in the slightest. <laughs> Where do you sit? It's it's definitely kind of uh, <laughs> diversified uh, the the community a little bit. Like there's there's a lot of people that are like no, actually this is quite fun. We've been asking for a new little game mode for a while, and then there's a lot of people that are like, I, and I may be kind of in this bracket where I'm thinking it's just something they've kind of chucked out and they haven't really thought about it too much. They've kind of gone, yeah, this is a cool little game mode. We'll have new little rules every week, which is kind of great. And I mentioned this on Monday that the only thing I think is like having the same prices as they do now yeah. for every player every week doesn't exactly make a lot of sense to me yeah and like this week it's unlimited things which actually unlimited doesn't get you that much more this year could be considering some of the premiums and stuff but it's just it, i think they could have been a bit more dynamic with it and kind of changed it a bit more every week but it just kind of feels like they've chucked it out and gone yeah here's a new game mode for you but they haven't put too much thought into it but i could be wrong people could love it for the next eight weeks i i would be surprised if it's still there come august really in okay. the same capacity it is now mm. but we'll see what happens yeah it could be fun well it's like they've, they've tried to use this as a bit of a open kind of beta testing for, for the game isn't it whereas maybe it might have been better to do like a closed one and get it ready for yeah. the start of, of next season luke any any in have you <laughs> i know you what you're gonna say any interest in this whatsoever i don't but that might just be because i'm old and grumpy and it's like <laughs> I barely want to play FPL, to be honest with you. It's like a, well, the prizes are bad oh, enough. Well, you're 2K right? in the world. And yeah. <laughs> wow. It's just too easy for him now. He's mastered it. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's exactly it. No, it's, it's more to do with, like, I do play other fantasy games and games with prizes, and they've generally been my focus. Like, FPL is kind of, because it's the most popular game, and I admit, like, it is, it can be fun, right? And it's obviously where the community is. So if you're heavily involved in fantasy, there's no other place to go, really. It's the daddy, isn't it? So you've got to get involved. But for for a game that says that it's, I mean, what does it say? Their money can't buy prizes. Oh, I think it was I, you I, as you I, highlighted I, I, some of I the prizes that, that are available. Up. Yeah, I had to put that up. <laughs> yeah, pretty sure. I mean, times are hard, but a stress ball is probably just about <laughs> within budget. Um, yeah, no, I, I just don't really get the audience. That's that's the thing. I, I kind of get the idea of I think they're trying to aim to just get more people involved. Ultimately, if they want yeah. clicks on the website, they want people who don't want to have a long because we are geeks, aren't we? Playing the FPL game, if you're playing what? it properly. It's a proper it's commitment. Speak, speak for yourself. Luke. <laughs> <laughs> Ten minutes before deadlines, waiting for le like all of that stuff. For the people out there that don't want any of that stuff, really, then you can kind of think, okay, they can have a bit of fun doing this. But it's the longevity of it. I just don't know how they plan to keep people coming back to it. I haven't looked into it though. Is there a way to have leagues where you sort of like Super 6 where you have um, a tally over the season and who's won the most weeks is top of the league or is that not in the game? I don't I, I don't think it's it's tallied up over weeks. I think it's just one yeah, week. So what are we... Um, apart, so you're literally fighting for that one week prize yeah. then pretty much. And, and also I think it was kind of aimed at casuals to kind of keep engagement but with mm. all these kind of loopholes that are coming out about how you can play it i love can, it already i love it because you can change every day like and all that kind of stuff actually it's going to be more hard work than well, FBL that, is, that, I think. that's what i get about that's what i'm saying about the audience it's like we're targeting yeah. casuals but actually it's probably geared slightly towards yeah. people who are more engaged because you've also got to do transfers in between days and weeks and other bits and pieces and it's like yeah i understand why they've done it as a beta i think it's here to stay but it will probably the guys will change i would imagine by the time it comes around um mm. for next season slightly but we'll see i was i was watching juice i feel juicy the other day and they, they were talking about it and 
Ash was was kind of very, very against it. But Ash wants to see... Ash made some good points and some points which I very much disagreed with. But his his first points were it would be better if it was kind of incorporated um, a bit more into kind of like the main the main game. Um, so, I mean, I've always wanted like achievements and stuff in, in FPL. You know, you hit a certain... You, you, get, you bring in a player who gets a hat trick, you get a little badge. You could play the game a bit differently because you could be trying to get those achievements like you get on on consoles and things like that you know this is like another separate game so you've already got the draft you've already got fpl you've already got this as well it's kind of three different things going on it would almost be better if it was like an extra tab on the website or or something like that where you could just kind of click over to it i find it a bit much you know having different games like i tried to play fan team for a bit and i tried to play sky and i just kind of lose interest i think that's probably going to happen with this as well um he then went on to say that he wanted like bits incorporated into the main game that would change things you know so you 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 could be getting points based on you know you you get a successful 11 that all scores points in a week and you get an achievement for it and you get extra points it's like no 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 let's not change like the fundamentals of the game but like a little extra to the main game to spice it up i think would be good i just don't know if this is if this is it for me i think like andy says there's a few problems with it you can exploit it already the pricing that's just palmer shouldn't always be Six million. Yeah. If he's playing Burnley at home, he's got to be fourteen million, so that you don't. Because otherwise, why you, everyone's going to pick him? Whereas you have a decision to make if he's a bit more. It's also more. for me just the amount of luck that's involved in one week is like is astronomical, right? I mean, look at the free hit last week mm. or, or whatever, and it's yeah, it's kind of it feels like in a week where you don't even have. I mean, that's I guess that's kind of part of the, the, the appeal. You don't have to pick the best players on paper. You can literally go for whoever, and you might end up winning this thing. Um, and that's kind of what who it's aimed at. But that doesn't appeal to most people who like games and want to play games, want to limit games that involve a lot of luck. We mm. don't want to play games that play a lot of luck. We want ones that have skill and we can put some time and effort into it. So I just don't think it's for us. I just think there's other people out there that it maybe does appeal to. And they'll probably have to do a few little tweaks, like we've said, to, to change it around. Uh, you know, on Football Manager or whatever, like the newer ones, like I prefer the older ones, right? And I think on the new Football Managers or at least ones sort of five, six years ago, you could change it to almost like classic mode and make it more simple. Mm. Maybe if they'd done something, I don't know how, but made FPL even more simple, like that would have worked better than this. But, you know. Yeah, that's I'm, that's what I meant. Like a kind of smaller add-on to the streamlined. game. Streamlined it a bit rather than trying to create this whole new thing that I just don't think is going to take off. Interesting, interesting super chat from the heroic doses. He's very, very cynical. Uh, they're just testing out the public's feedback on potential new rules and the server's ability to handle midweek transfers. It's trash. I mean, maybe. I maybe. mean, to be fair, the rules thing could be the case because they've already pushed the deadline back. They might be debating moving it forward. I'm not convinced that's going to make a huge amount of difference to the leaks we get. In fact, it might open up the game to even more leaks because it's moving it closer to the three pm's when there's when there's more games. But they could well be they could well be testing something like that, couldn't they, Andy? I mean, potentially. I, I, <laughs> Look, personally, he's given I us five dollars, all right. Just, just agree with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> personally, I think it, I think it's just an engagement thing. I think it's just because what is it? Is it about fifty percent have dropped off now? Over fifty percent mm. of of managers are dead. And uh, sorry, that manager teams are dead, not the managers are dead. Uh, but I'm just wondering whether <laughs> I'm just wondering whether it's a um, a trying to keep people involved, if that makes sense, or bringing people back to FPL, and then they they play this and go, oh, I'll check mm. my real team. Um, I, I got the impression it was more to do with that. But, I mean, if you're going to try and get people more engaged, doing those money can't buy prizes probably isn't the, uh, the way to do uh, it. A, a shirt, a ball, and what was the other one? Uh, a game. A game, <laughs> A game yeah. you can buy. A ball you can buy. A shirt, a signed shirt, a bit harder to come by, but you can still buy it. So I think the hands are tied a little bit in the sense that because of the it's international, isn't it, and the money mm. involved. That's where like Sky is different, obviously, but it's only open to UK and Ireland and, and the betting rules around that. But at the same time, surely it just really, if anything, highlights the budget FPL is working with. I don't think it's as big as what people mm. think it is, like the amount of money that Premier League give towards them. The fact that they like Andy was saying about moving the servers and stuff, that, that would cost a lot of money to, right, to, mm. to run the game closer to the deadline for 10, 11 million people and actually have it update at a reasonable time, which yeah. is a consideration. So I just think it highlights again, they probably haven't really got the money we think they no, have. No, when I the know. prizes yeah. aren't quite reaching the pinnacle. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, because they've, they've got Cause such... It... Sorry, it's still gone, Andy. 
I was going to say it's because they're paying all those content creators. That's <laughs> yeah. What it is. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see that? There was a there's a certain <laughs> account I'm not even going to mention because I can't be bothered. I blocked him a long time ago, but he was on there saying, "Oh, this game, you wait, it's all going to be monetized and content creators. It's, it's just to pay their wages. Yeah, get, getting us all to the studio and paying us our, our huge amounts of money. Uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely going to be that. Yeah, I, I don't. Know. I think it's a, I think it's an interesting concept. I know, like, let's talk. Andy's been talking about a free hit type thing a week for, for ages and wanting to see it. So I doubt this it's quite what he envisioned, but it's something. And maybe with feedback, they'll improve it kind of going forward. So yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see. On, on the prizes, I, they've got such good links with Premier League clubs because they get the Premier League players are doing the videos and, and everything like that. I just think there's surely more they could do. You know, if it was like the winner gets a VIP tour of the club and gets to meet the players, their favourite players and all that, like rather than what? just... A, a VIP ticket to go see a game. It just feels who, a bit. Who was the guy a couple of years ago that won FPL and didn't get his tickets for like mm. four years or something? Yeah. And it took a, a really long time to even get the prizes that he got for winning FPL. Mm. So I don't know. I mean, we play it because we enjoy it, I suppose, don't we? But yeah. Is, is it enough? Yeah. yeah it's prob- it prob- it probably is enough, but I, I'm, it's, it's not the friends you make along the way. It's the friends <laughs> oh, you make God. along the way. <laughs> <laughs> Football's the winner. If that isn't the reason to stop playing, I don't know. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so are you going to play Andy? Yes or no? Uh, I, I haven't even looked at it. I don't even know where to find it on the app at the moment. Are you getting so, pressure from Chris know. yet to be making content, like video content for No, you? no, <laughs> not yet, no. <laughs> That's surprising. I expect to see some of that. Well, let us know in the chat. I mean, I've just done a poll. 68% say it's not really for them. Uh, 32% saying they, they're kind of interested in it. If you want to see any content on Black Box, let us know. I mean, if we've got enough people interested in it, we could do you know a little video every week or or something at the end of the stream, I don't think we are going to, unless it kind of really takes off this this season. But yeah, let us know kind of what your, what your thoughts on it uh, are. Uh, second big talking point, moving a little bit away from FPL, is that, was that the flag the flag change on the, uh, on the England top? <laughs> Andy, thoughts? Should they be messing I mean, with the I, flag? <laughs> no, I don't really care, to be honest. I thought it was quite cool, personally. Yeah. I thought, yeah, I thought it was quite cool. I know people... Got a little bit upset about it, but I thought it was quite cool. Didn't one of the players play with their collar up because they were annoyed as well? Yeah, so I don't know. Yeah, I, I, in, I, in, I, in, I, in could... England under twenty one game, I think it was. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not too bothered by it personally. Yeah. Luke fuming. I'm. I was so out of the loop. I didn't even know what this was until someone. I saw like a rogue comment, and I. I could not give a monkey. But I do not <laughs> care what the cross looks like. The reason, like, just yeah, whatever. Do not care. Do you know what? I, I genuinely didn't tell you I was going to bring this one up because I was just hoping no. one of you had like ultra strong views against, oh, yeah, don't touch our flag. It's, you know, you can't change St. George's cross and all that. <laughs> uh, yeah, just to yeah, correct, I think it's one of the most ridiculous things people could get in arms about, <laughs> I think I've, I've ever seen. It's a shirt. They're going to make design choice. They've done it for years. Calm down. Yeah, yeah e- easy one. Uh, then with the double game week. Announcement as well. I thought that was quite a big one over the international break. See Ben Krellin's been been working hard uh, through the season. I think there was like maybe a couple of things that surprised him uh, in that. Yeah. Obviously, we're going to be talking a bit more about double game weeks, kind of as we as we go. But Andy, no free hit. Um, sorry, Andy, you've got the free hit. Me and Luke haven't. Yeah, free hit thirty-four. Yeah, no, I thought free hit thirty-four looked quite nice because of the Spurs blank as well. I thought that was quite nice. Um, mm. I thought that was something that surprised people and. Uh, did, there was so much, wasn't there, about the whole, you've chosen the wrong strategy, you've chosen the right strategy. So I, I was quite glad the way it fell in terms of, actually, there is some quite nice ways to go. If you've got wild card free hit and bench boost left, I think you're in a great position. But I think, actually, there is a little bit of tinkering and moving around if you've got wild card or you've got free hit. So, actually, I thought it fell quite nicely. Mm. Um, but, yeah, it's obviously, this is what we like. This is this is what where the fun starts, is that we're all now starting to plan and think about how we're going to be moving forward. So, uh, yeah, no, I thought it was all right, actually. I thought it was quite a nice little drop. Luke, you regretting using the free hit? Um, I mean, the score was definitely <laughs> not what I wanted. And if you could offer it back to me now, um, yeah, I would probably take it. But I would say that the free hit team in 34 hopefully won't t- look too dissimilar to what my team can make it to anyway. And I think that's what Andy was getting at. Mm. It's like, it doesn't look like it's that much of an advantage. Um, be- simply because I guess the Arsenal game's fallen in there. The fact that um, Bournemouth are playing as well, um, that we're loaded up. And obviously we've got Liverpool. So most people who free hit will have Arsenal, Liverpool and Bournemouth players. And that kind of sets you up pretty nicely. Mm. So I hope in the end, and I-, I saw Let's Talk Andy saying this quite a lot as well. It probably is not going to matter too much which strategy you went yeah. with. Yeah. Um, 
and again, luck will be the winner. I mean, it, it could be in 34 that those little extra players that, that someone like Andy can get on free here go absolutely nuclear, and that's going to be the difference. Mm. So that's kind of what you'd be hoping for. I mean, the likes of, I mean, I haven't really looked, but Eze or someone like that that someone might not have might go crazy, and uh, that could be the difference. Yeah, I mean, I think... The, the, I think it's nice that you, you, you could look at it positive from both sides, though. Like, I'm not looking at it with a free hit and thinking, oh, my God, I'm going to get absolutely destroyed. Because, like you say, I've already got my two Arsenal. I'm going to bring in Liverpool, Liverpool anyway. I've already got Bournemouth and well, Kirk is. I'm not sure if he really counts. But I've already got two Bournemouth <laughs> from from that. And it, I, it, I was going to wildcard. And actually, when the announcement came, it made me realise, actually, I don't need to use it now. And I can wait a bit till till 35. Sorry, Andy, come on. Yeah, I, I will say as well, those that don't have wildcard or free hit, it is going to be interesting yeah. how they're going to do it because obviously the teams that double in 34 are the, it's the opposite teams that double in 37 yeah. and you've got the blank for Spurs and you've got the double for Spurs as well and Chelsea like actually it's going to be quite hard to navigate that but if you've got one of wild card or free hit I think you can get through it fairly well yeah. no, I agree with that and then the final thing I wanted to mention uh, was an exchange I had with Ed Fantasy Ed obviously a good friend of the show <laughs> uh, <saw> <laughs> oh my god in terms of in terms of opinions I thought this was right up there as, as one of the he's worst, regretted this since uh, I've seen uh, he, he did a tweet about Manu being called up to the to the England squads said that he'd rather have of you know he'd rather play Gallagher Henderson over him you know okay Gallagher he's, he's having a good season for Chelsea fine a bit more experienced Henderson, come on. So I said, you surely wouldn't actually play Henderson over Maynou, would you, in the team? And his reply, Henderson, who is nothing exciting, but has at least been there and done it over a just about average 18-year-old player, I would. I, I just don't think you should better get away with that. I think that is such a such a hideous take on Maynou. He should be, he should be able to get a, a game on um, on any sort of TV as a presenter, right? Because that's what half of them dinosaurs <laughs> say. They get soon S and them a lot. That's the kind of crap they show now. <laughs> It's the kind of job I could see it's kind of going into. So there's some kind of like really talk like, sport. yeah, yeah. Some really contrarian <laughs> pundit who goes on talk sport. Yeah. He's, he does, does he know he we're has... actually laying into him today? Did you tell him? That no, he'd be bringing his... no, okay. not at all. Just, just, yeah. Just uh, Rory Jennings, if you're listening, just give a, give Ed a shout and I'm sure you two can, can do a, can do a podcast. No, no smile. Don't know who Rory Jennings is. Isn't he? Really? He's an idiot. I was thinking of Pat Jennings, I was thinking of Arsenal. R- Rory, <laughs> Rory, Jennings. Rory Jennings was the Chelsea fan who, who said when Haaland joined that he wouldn't get like 10 oh, goals yeah. in the league. If you oh, right, that. okay. <laughs> so was, I was yeah. thinking of Leroy was, Jenkins. Yeah. And look, you know his name and look how many clicks he's had as a result of it. You yeah. thought Rory Jennings was Leroy Jenkins? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Leroy Jenkins. Yeah. 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 He's <laughs> Sorry, Lou, did you say we're all nerds earlier? I don't think that's the uh, don't think that's the case no, can't be. Uh, at all. Uh, just qu- give a quick shout before we come on some FPL stuff, just to our new members who've joined over the last two weeks. Uh, shout out to Stephen Opunar, uh, Pajita, Greg Frost, Fruit Plug, love these names, uh, Mark Jones uh, as well. Uh, really appreciate you you joining at the tier. If anyone else is interested, you can join, get access to the Discord channel, the Predictions League, and yeah, be part of a lovely growing community. There I don't want to. I don't want to ask what a fruit plug is. <laughs> I don't. You don't want to know what. <laughs> Let's just move on. <laughs> How do people Let's come up on. with some of these days? I think it's great. <laughs> All right. Let's. I mean, I called this. I called this up. This episode recovery time because of just how bad the the last game week was. I mean, I got a decent green arrow. You know, any other circumstance and like a ninety k green arrow up to oh, just outside of five hundred k would would be pretty good. Um, but yeah, twenty four points. I benched Castagna and Wood. Uh, who got 19 between them. <laughs> so if I played that, I was never, I mean, I was never going to play Castagna, but Woods, I was considering. Uh, I did bench Regulon, which was the main one, and played Vitinha, which is which is eight points. So that was kind of where the 24 points came mm-hmm. from. But he was the only return. Fleck and Pedro, Doty, Son, Madison, Bowen, Paqueta, Elanga, Watkins, Tony. I, I threw in some differentials. I threw in Paqueta and Elanga, uh, and it just, yeah, just didn't really, really pay off. But... 24 points. And the thing is, if I okay. hadn't played the free hit, I would have taken a minus eight for these players. And then I would have been wildcarding this week because I would have had like Ilanga and Tony in the team. And I'd probably want shot of them straight away. So using the free hit has saved the wild card and probably got me 20 points, which is kind of what I thought it would do. So I don't think it's a complete a complete disaster. We have to try and take the positives out of it. Yeah, you really, <laughs> you really do. I mean, you, you especially. Uh, oh, 20, actually, no, twenty-one. Okay, twenty-one. You, you had one return in, uh, in Gibbs White, but yeah. my hero, who always <laughs> slagging off the inside time and didn't want to pick as well. It's like 
so close to not having him, so that would have gone <laughs> terribly. And um, no points on your bench, Luke, so you're the real winner here. No, exactly. I got that right, didn't I? Picked a shit bench. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's what you say at the end of the day. I, I had three players going into this week, and we didn't know about the blanks for sure until, um, what was it, a couple of weeks ago. So I, I couldn't really, with my team, there wasn't really a way for me to plan to get to this point. I was already committed to free hit quite a long time ago. Um, it would just be nice that we'd have just hit default pretty much. You know, even if like I hit a 40 points or a 50 points, that difference compared to everyone else yeah. who had to take hits to get it would have been very, very noticeable. And that's really all we would really, I, I would be happy to take that. I think I put a tweet out long before saying, I don't actually expect to get any points in free hit tonight. I didn't realize it was going to be this bad though. Mm. This was astronomically bad. And what can you do? You can't base it on the outcome, right? I think if we rerun that game week anytime, how often is it that literally you get one return in your entire team? It's it's not likely to be that bad. Or, well, maybe for you this season has, but for me, it's actually been all right. Hey. Quite a lot of time. <laughs> oh. hey. Sorry, I had to slip that in. Um, yeah, but like an extra 10 points, 15 points, but what can you do? It's gone and we just have to take the fact that we might have beat other people um, who have taken hits to get pretty much the same team. It's... Is, again, it's come down to, did you get Mooners? Did you get like the one or two players that, that did anything? And you're probably happy with it. But unfortunately, I didn't. I mean, who actually returns? Mooners, Woods, Gibbs, White. Yeah, is that, uh, is that so long ago Fofana now. Fofana got a goal. And yeah. then Fulham defenders, yeah. And for, I mean, there was no, there was no chance. Was Robinson there? was relatively popular, yeah. actually. It, it is annoying though because there was there was a big battle, wasn't there? Of a lot of people saying, you know, free you can't free hit this week. There's such a you know small amount of teams going into it, and I, don't know, I saw a bit of potential. I saw potential in Forest to, to score to score a few goals against Luton. You did as well. You went with the two the two Forest mids. I mean, Elanga had a goal off the line and an assist mm. clean off the line as well. He, yeah. he could have hauled um, in in that match. I mean, for all of the popular man, um, West Ham and Villa players to all blank as well, and just like Antonio to come out with with like anything from that i mean yeah it was a it was a it was a really kind of just, I think just, it was just too, a weird week it was two main events wasn't it it was the region red card for most people oh, which basically God. just kills double brentford defense possibly tony as well like obviously got the minus three that was a massive event and then the fact that fulham just battered spurs mm. did, like if that was even a vaguely closer game where spurs at least scored one or two goals like the week could have been a lot better but yeah it was would, would but Maybe all that scenario, it didn't happen. I think it's just a weird week when the all that you, you know, if you went like ultra differential, and let you know, unless you stocked up on Fulham, you, you'd struggle. Even if you went differential within teams of other of other ones that played, you'd struggle. But if you played it safe and went with the the model, which normally does so well, you also got got a, a low score. I mean, Andy, you must be over the moon. Fifteen points, I... but free hit <laughs> yeah. in play in, intact. Yeah, I mean, obviously. So I wildcarded two weeks ago and got quite a nice, healthy green from doing it in that double with Bournemouth. And then in this week, obviously, I didn't take a hit because I, I didn't need to because of the wildcard. I brought in, uh, I, I got 15 points. I got 6K red arrow, 5K red arrow, <laughs> which I take considering all the free hits that were going about because I thought it was going to be a lot more than that. But all Saturday morning, it was between Tony and Muniz into who I brought in. And Muniz was the one where I was like, this will suit my team better moving forward because it means I can take Morris out for Haaland rather than Watkins for Haaland. But Tony, I thought, would get me more immediate points. And Tony, I thought, had obviously the nicer fixture as well. So I went with Tony in the end. And obviously, Tony got one point and Muniz got a brace. But what can you do? I, I, I can't beat myself up too much, apart from obviously thinking about the long term. And maybe I should have been doing that a little bit more with a wild card, not in my back pocket. But... Considering I got 15 points, this is probably my worst game week I've had in years. And obviously I had 10 players for this for this blank. Mm. It could have gone a hell of a lot worse. So actually, a, a 5k red arrow, I'd, I'd take that. The Moon is Tony thing was funny because you were in the chat with uh, with us talking about talking yeah. about that move. Panicking a little bit, I, I said, but who to bring in? And uh, to get punished I mean, that, that badly. Yeah, I know. You, you think over you know, over three or four weeks, maybe Munez comes comes through with, with the better fixtures, but well it's just Munez v Spurs or Tony v Burnley. Yeah, you'd expect it. It's a little thing called variance, isn't it, Luke? Isn't, isn't that what you what you like to say? Absolutely. You nailed it. You've nailed it. Sorry, I was just distracted by FPL Harry in the chat. Um Oh it's double. not him. It's not him, it, just ignore it. It's not him. I, no, yeah. No. Okay. I He's been in all of them this week. Oh my yeah. god, how sad have you got to be to create a fake yeah. FPL Harry account yeah. to be tweeting the, these? The real one the real one has a tick next to his name. We had oh, it on Monday as well. Oh my god, is this yeah. is this the levels people are going to? Thank you, Delia. 
Delia's on the case. Of course she is. Super, super mod. Right, let's talk some more FPL. Let's talk about some forward planning. We're going to get into some team data and player data. Quite a few players to talk about, I think, going going forward. This is an interesting part of the season now because people have got different chips left and different strategies and people are going to be targeting different teams um, as well. Uh, Krellin, though, Ben Krellin has updated his uh, fixture kind of ticker. He's got the projected games in for 37. But what we do know is that in 34, there's going to be double game weeks for Arsenal, Liverpool, Bournemouth, Everton, Wolves, Crystal Palace, and Sheffield United. <laughs> do we do we even <laughs> bother uh, to count them? I mean, Andy, who's like first like first thoughts? Looking at the doubles, obviously Liverpool and Arsenal fighting for the title yeah. this season. Are they kind of the main areas to to pick your transfers? Is there any any other teams that you're thinking of? Like a shrewd move. No, I, th I think so. I think Arsenal and Liverpool have got to be your priorities, especially. I mean, Salah especially has got such nice fixtures leading up to the double as well, with with three home fixtures. I think they've they've got to be someone that you you look at. I think Darwin is is sneaking into a lot of teams now. If people are on wild card, I think a lot of people are going for Darwin, and then rightly so as well. But if you're looking away from Arsenal and Liverpool. Luke's actually already mentioned one. I think Eze is going to start creeping into a lot of teams. I think mm. Crystal Palace have quite a nice double there. West Ham and Newcastle at home. So I think they could start creeping in. And the other one I mentioned on Monday as well, which is probably going to be in most wildcards as well, is Eight Nori. So Eight Nori's got some nice fixtures moving forward. He's got the double as well. And then after the double, he's got Luton at home. So I think Eight Nori could start uh, creeping into quite a few teams too. But I do think obviously Arsenal and Liverpool, with those fixtures around the double as well, it, they're they're going to be where people are using their mm. transfers, but most people will you have double or triple Arsenal already anyway. It's the Liverpool boys that a lot of people probably don't have, or the right Liverpool boys that the people don't have. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how people are moving forward. But I think, I mean, Bournemouth people have probably got a little bit of already, and Everton and Sheffield United are probably the teams that are going to be derelict in that double, unless yeah. you're on free hit, and then I'll go with triple Everton, a, a Branthwaite or a Pickford maybe. But it's it's hard to see yeah. where else where else you're going to go. Uh, with that, Luke, you've moved early for a certain Egyptian legend, haven't you? I saw him in your team. Yes, I have. Yeah, and the person mm. that made that possible is Sarabia, who I think is another one who could be pretty mm. good for that because I think Wolves games are okay. Their, their doubles, I mean, Arsenal's not a great game, but they've got two homes, haven't they? And it's versus Bournemouth. So I think Cunha, if he's back, and Sarabia are a decent sort of filler. And with Sarabia, he's like 4.6 or 4.7. He's so cheap, so he kind of enables um, you to have the likes of Salah. So yeah, I think they're decent options. And I think they, their fixtures aren't too bad on the way there as well. So you can kind of mm. go there already if you want to. Um, yeah, so I think they're quite handy. I'm not sure what the status is on on the likes of Huang. I think Neto's probably out for the season, did, did they say? Yeah, or very Neto, close Neto's to. out. Huang's out for, for a little while <clears> as well. Yeah, so you'd like to think that Cunha, when he comes back, and Sarabia, um, along with probably Huang, when he's fully returns, would be their front three. Um, mm. So yeah, seems they seem okay. Again, I think this is one of the things that kind of does help, um, you know, us. You know, w w without the without the free hits, is that the fixtures are nice, as Andy and, and you have both said. Like Wolves have got Villa away. Okay, that's quite tough if you're looking at like Ignore or, or I mean, a Kuna though could score against Villa. I don't exactly mean that that solid defensively. Uh, but then it's Burnley, West Ham, Forest. I like all three of those. Bournemouth have got a great run. You know, Everton, Palace, uh, Man United, all at home. Three home games <clears> in four, and then Luton away. Like that's you know you're not going to be getting rid of Solanke. You might have been bringing in Semenyo, um, or you know because he's been doing quite well uh, lately as well. And then Liverpool. I mean the fixtures couldn't be better for Liverpool. Again three home games: Brighton, Sheffield United, and Palace. And who's ever a Wayne game? Manchester United. Like it's it's yeah. you know it's perfect. You you want to be bringing in even if you're going to free hit in 34, you're still going to be be wanting to bring in players from these these teams. Andy, I'm sure you've you've got Salah already, haven't you? Because you you had a plan in place for for him. I will do, yeah. So it'll yeah. be Bowen to, to Salah this week. Yeah, so I left money in the bank to make sure I could get Salah and Haaland back. The the one thing I will say, obviously, if, you, if you've not got a free hit, is the two teams you're going to want to kind of invest in if you have the free hit are Chelsea and Spurs. If you look mm. at Chelsea and Spurs' fixtures, they're, they're quite nice up until the double. And then obviously Spurs blank and Chelsea have Arsenal away, which is probably the worst one of the worst fixtures you could have. But then they've got the double out of it as well. So I feel like Chelsea and Spurs are the the weird kind of team as to how much do you invest in them if you're wild card in this week or if you're wild card in next week, whatever it is, because it is the Arsenal and Liverpool players and obviously that double in 34 that you're really wanting to focus on. So yeah, I feel Chelsea and Spurs are the kind of, they're, they're the team I'm going to be investing in moving well, forward. Well, that's what I was going to say, because you, you've used yeah. the wild card. So yeah. you almost need to be setting yourself up for post 34. 
So yeah, that means you're yeah, going to exactly. be potentially ignoring Liverpool and and Bournemouth and wow. Wolves, right? I mean, Bournemouth, not so much. Yeah, I mean, Liverpool. I've, I've got to have. I've got to have at least one of their assets mm. for that for that run up to thirty four because I can't ignore Brighton, Sheffield United, and Crystal Palace at home, and even Man United away. Liverpool can do whatever they want against United sometimes. So I feel like I've I've still got to have like a Salah. I think it's going to be the fact that a lot of people have what double Liverpool, and I might only have one, which could be a bit of a a, a tough one for me. But I think you've still got to invest in at least one Liverpool moving forward. Yeah, I think if you're if you're wild carding this week and you've got the free hit. You've got to be targeting Chelsea, haven't you, Luke? Gusto, Palmer, yeah, and someone else. Jackson. Jackson? <laughs> Who would Jackson recommend him? Is this? Still incredible, man. He's right up there. I was looking on FBREF, actually, for the whole season and uh, non penny XGI across the entire season. You've got Nunes at the per 90, you've got Nunes at the top. Harlan just behind, and third place is Jackson. Yeah. yeah, he's still there. He started to score the goals, though, right? It starts to let, you know, it starts to mirror up usually in the mm. in this world. So, um, I still think he is a pretty good option. Whether I go this early because he's also on like eight or nine yellows, isn't he? Or something. He, he's, he's, on yeah, he's on nine. He's on nine yeah. yellows. Yeah, incredible effort from him. Um, so <laughs> yeah, you probably don't. In the first five weeks, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, I remember. Yeah, I managed to avoid that one somehow. But um, yeah, I, so I don't think you can go for him yet, unfortunately. But if we get to thirty-four and he's he's sort of in the clear, then he's going to be an option, isn't he? But yeah, I agree. Chelsea options. The fixtures are really good. Um, clean sheets are obviously a premium. I think they've got the highest clean sheet odds this week for obvious reasons. Being home to Burnley. Um, so Gusto's just a, a lovely pick, isn't he? He's mm. really, I used Andy's words there. He's a lovely, lovely pick. Lovely. <laughs> um, I think that's who I'd be moving for. I do like the goalkeeper as well. I don't know if there's any sort of doubts around Sanchez maybe getting some game time even for like shop window later on, but I'm, I'm not sure about that. I think Petrovic is fairly secure. So I think him and him and Gusto I are pretty good. I don't, see, it's I, the other ones I'm not sure about. I don't know about Petrovic. I, 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 I'm I'm not Sanchez's biggest biggest fan. I wasn't you know too disappointed when I saw him leave Brighton. He's had a pretty poor season at Chelsea. I think Petrovic has quite clearly done a better job, but is there enough in it? I I, I don't know. I, I'd be worried about it if if Chelsea lost. Say they lose to Burnley or something, and Pochettino wants to start making some changes. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see Sanchez coming back. I can't see side. it. I can't you think see Petrovic it, has man. done? In, he's been good, but has he? absolutely locked down that position to the end of the season. I don't think you can say locked down because Sanchez has had moments of being good. But He's not in the FA Cup, Sanchez. You know. Yeah, but a lot of teams use two different keepers for different not competitions now. In the, not a lot of the time in the Cup and not, not a mid-table team like Chelsea. Mm, felt you had to, to slip say. that in there. Felt good to say. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not on wage structure. They're not mid table. So I think um <laughs> I think he's fine. I think he's okay. My only worry would be like it gets to 37, 38, they've got nothing to play for. If you still need him for that yeah. point, then maybe there's a bit of a question mark. But I think from now and certainly for the double, he should be fine. And okay. um is who, who else would you go for if you want if you want another defender? I know I'm saying Gusto's another one. Obviously, James could come back, but I don't think Sassy, that's for a while. I don't trust it. Yeah, he's the one that seems to pop up, but I'm mm. still not overly confident. Maybe because I don't particularly rate him as a player, which shouldn't really affect it. But he started all games but two this season. Sassy. Yeah, so he's probably the one, isn't he? But mm. I mean, Thiago Silva played every game and then suddenly started getting dropped. So it's not like yeah, it but he's 80 years old. Yeah, but he's 80 times better than Sassy, I think. <laughs> good, very good point. Very good point. <laughs> uh, right, let's take a look at some stats. Then let's take a look at team data defense to start with. This is team data over the season. Uh, sorted by XG conceded non-penalty per 90. And you can see Arsenal right at the top there, 0.65. We talk about them every every week. Defensively, they are just on another level when it comes to you know the lack of chances that teams are able to create against them. Interestingly, we're going to talk a bit more about Arsenal as we, as we go forward, because as much as people laugh and have a go at me, Havertz is now an option for that third Arsenal spot. He's got to be, hasn't he? Got to be. Anyway, we're going to talk about him later. Let's not get into that now. But <laughs> the other option is nice to go. Cue. Thank you. Is to go double <laughs> double Arsenal defence. So, Luke, you're Raya's biggest fan. You've had him for pretty much the whole uh, the whole season. He's been absolutely terrible for you um, from the most part, despite these uh, these amazing stats. You could go Saliba. Uh, you could go obviously for Gabriel. Also, Kiwi or has been playing the majority of games now for Arsenal mm. at left back. Is is he an option, Andy? Yeah, I think so. I, I think he's he's pretty much nailed in that team now, even with Zenchenko back. I think it's Kiwiel's place to lose. Obviously, you know, like you were saying about um, uh, Petrovic, it could take one game and obviously get it replaced. But I do think Kiwiel is a good shout. And actually, he's been doing really well recently as well mm. in terms of in terms of attack and returns for, for Arsenal. I, I 
do think with with all the stats they've got and the double game week and stuff, you can do so much worse than go and double Arsenal defence. And if you're looking at bench boosting in 34, Raya's a good shout. And obviously you can keep Raya, you know, moving forward as well and playing in those nice fixtures. So I do think double Arsenal defence makes sense. I don't think I'd be going with Saliba now. I think just because it, I think Gabriel is 100% obviously the way you go because of the the potential with attack and returns. And then it's one of Raya or Kiwior, I think, because Kiwior is that much cheaper, but Raya is, you know, that, that goalkeeper as well. But Luke may jump in and kind of uh, um, argue about Raya because I know you haven't enjoyed owning him at times this year. <laughs> oh, but he seems, to have, he seems to have come good. Every now and again, he, he should have got more. I mean, the, the stats right there tell you he should have kept more clean sheets than he's actually ended up getting. But um, he's actually done better than most other goalkeepers, so I can't really complain. Like mm. virtually anyone else, I could, unless you got lucky with the was it Ariola like three games in a row? Oh, don't talk to me about that guy. Don't yeah, <laughs> and I mean, I've got Ariola as my pairing, so he's been on my bench each time, which makes it feel worse um, that you're spending extra money for what should be a better asset and, it, and it's not returning i just have to disagree slightly on the, the cure thing i know he's been playing well um i just think tommy asu zinchenko i think for certain games zinchenko they still really like him i know he makes them defensively lap sometimes and i do agree that it's probably his place to lose but there's enough ambiguity there that i wouldn't touch that especially you just there's too many other options that are nailed so i think i would go 100 percent gabrielle um, and yeah, if double defence, it probably still would be Saliba because I don't really think there's that many other defenders in the game you can go to. Mm. Like, um, you know, the fact that Man City defenders are probably going to get rotated all over the place. Um, we already just talked about there's Chelsea defence. There's not many places. You know, there's there's the odd name like the Van Dykes and the Poros and stuff, but they start to get very expensive if you want to afford all those other big hitters. Mm. Um, so yeah, I suppose that there has to be a sacrifice somewhere, but I feel like... Um, I would still sort of go Saliba and Gabriel if I had to get a double Arsenal defence. I'm a little bit more... Maybe White. Yeah, White. Well, I, I flashed Defiel Meerkat's thing because he, he mentioned White as well. We all laughed at his price at the start of the season, so there's no way we're going to be paying extra money for, for him. But mm. he's been he's been absolutely brilliant, uh, especially in the last few games. Well, uh, Tommy Asu is going to play some games, isn't he? And he can play left back and right just back. Just on a new contract, he, doesn't he, Tommy Asu? Yeah, he yeah. has. Yeah. Mm. So where's he going to go? He's going to replace either White or Kior in some games. It's, I mean... He has See, to. I'm I'm a little bit kind of hotter on on Kiwi or uh, than than you, and I'm probably more in line with with Andy. It's, he started the last five games, but with a little bit of context, Brentford, Sheffield United, Burnley <laughs> were free. They also, they also were free had injuries, of those, and they had injuries. But he has been he has been very very good. And yeah, do you need like do you need him to play? Every game, I get, obviously you yes. don't want you don't want to play. <laughs> you do. But the, the point is, though, is that this isn't like if they were all around four point five million, I'd be like, yeah, absolutely. Or you just go for the one that's going to play. But Saliba and and White are pricey. Then they're pushing six million at the moment. Mm. And Kiwi was four five. So if, if if funds are tight, and we know that def- defenders in general this season have been a bloody nightmare. So why not take the risk on someone who is probably going to play the majority of games between now and the end of the season and is is cheaper. I like Kiwi. I mean, if you're if you're not on bench boost or you're on free, whatever it is, I mean, you're only going to be playing three defenders in game week 34 anyway. Mm. So are you going to be playing Kiwi? Because I'm assuming most people will have eight Nori. I'm assuming most people will have a, a, what a Gabriel. So you've if got you one say spot. Zabane. If you say Zabane, what <laughs> that guy? <laughs> no, it's Kirkes, mate. No, it's. Uh, but I suppose who is the or third defender going to be in game week 34, and is Kiwi or going to be that person? Like I, I. I Agree that it's his place to lose, but also I'm not. I'm wondering whether he's going to play both games in game week 34. Well, but is go. there another defender that's going to? Mm. You know, you got Munoz, who's obviously coming up. For Crystal Palace is he going to be your third defender in game week 34? I'm wondering whether Kiwi is going to be that man. I don't know. I think if you have Kiwi, you would want him to play those games and play him because it was well, the best defense in the league, and they're playing home to Chelsea and away to Wolves, aren't they? So that's what I mean by having him. You're not having another Arsenal defender, and I do think they've probably got one of the highest odds across those two games to keep at least a clean sheet. I do agree that if you don't need to play him that often, you could you could chance it, right? In the end of the day, you could you could just stay in the team, but it's probably just a little bit more of a chance that, than, I, than I would want to take personally. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, the other, other uh, team to mention, I mean, Man City and Liverpool were second and third on this list. Just to put it into context, Arsenal over the season, 0.65, means they're conceding, you know, you know, uh, two thirds of a goal, <laughs> uh, a, season, uh, a match, or however we want to look at it. Man City's 0.91, so that's closer to the one goal kind of expected. Liverpool 1.21, so you know com- a diff- the difference between Arsenal and Liverpool is is actually quite quite a lot, nearly, nearly double. Fourth though, really surprised by this over the season. Everton, in terms of those expected goals conceded on minute 90, 
1.25. We, we're kind of dissing them, FPL, dis, FPL dissing them, saying that, uh, you know, we're not going to be considering their options. Thank you, Luke. But <laughs> defensively, doing doing all right. Another team where they maybe haven't had the... I mean, look, I mean, you can say that about a lot of their... A lot of their attack. There was a point when they, their XG was absolutely off the charts, and they weren't they weren't scoring goals. They're having the same thing with with that. I mean, look, you just said things eventually revert back to the norm, and this is normally a, a good metric. Does that mean Everton? We should be. Yeah, I mean, I'm is probably going to get an Everton. Yeah, that's probably Andy was saying who would be your third defender. And my plan at the moment, I plan to get an Everton defender in for the double game week, mm. and I think the fixtures after the double game week are pretty good. I think it's Brentford, Luton, Sheffield United. Um, it is beforehand. good knowledge. Well, I'm kind of half staring at it over here. I'm not that good. <laughs> you, you, didn't, you didn't need to say that. You didn't need to say that. I gave you a. <laughs> uh, I'll remain humble. I'm not that. Good. I don't remember Everson's <laughs> fixtures all the time, unfortunately. Um, yeah, and no, I think they're pretty good. I think Pickford's probably the best. Might arguably be the best goalkeeper in the double game yeah. if you want free hit. He's. I think he's a, a lovely option. I think I'd um, be picking if I was wild carding. I'd be picking Pickford. Picking Pickford. I think picking Pickford. Picking yeah. Pickford, yeah. Um, because you've got is it. I'm not looking at the fixtures now. You'll have to say, is it home forest, I think, in one of them? And the other one's... Yeah, the double, the doubles, home at forest and home at Liverpool. So, so two home games. One one where yeah. they could get a clean sheet in forest and one mm. where he could make a load of saves. Yeah. De- decent, yeah. decent double. Yeah, I think he'd be the ideal, but I'll probably get an Everton defender. So I suppose, yeah, I will be getting an Everton player probably, if all, if all goes well. There you go. Andy, which one are you buying? Can we talk to you into one? What well, Everton defender? <laughs> well, I won't be. I won't be investing because obviously I'll be free hitting in thirty four. So I'll, I'll I'll leave that for a bit. But Branthwaite is obviously the one that makes sense because you want the player that's gonna yeah. gonna definitely play in those two. Uh, but like I said, I do think Munoz is somebody that's gonna start creeping in as well. Oh, boy, He's, where does he this scored... Munoz love come from all of a sudden? What he went off injured, scored... by the way, in the he scored break. he scored midweek as well, didn't he? But he's looking good. It's either that or people go for Tyreek Mitchell. So, <laughs> <laughs> is Munoz the new Tyreek Mitchell? He, no, no, he's no one's. No one's the new Tyreek no one, Mitchell. No he has looked very good, to be fair. He has looked quite, you know, yeah. good offensively. I think he might have gone off injured in the international. Right? Yeah, I need to check up on that. But you yeah. know, how much do we know whether they're genuine or not when it's internationals? We're still waiting a bit to, to know what, what Palace are like defensively, even though kind of what their attack like. Obviously, it's a new manager mm. um, over, over Hodgson. I mean, defensively over the season, the data's pretty good. They're sixth. Um, on the list, just behind, just behind Brighton and Everton. Again, I mean Everton, Brighton, and Palace. Not really teams that you'd associate with with good defenses this year, but the stats are are pretty good. A team that you do associate with good defense is obviously Newcastle. They're down in 18th now over the season. They were top four for probably first seven or eight games, I think. And then obviously injuries have, have taken place. They got their most of their players back. Obviously not Pope, but the, the defense was looking kind of first choice again. Uh, and now Botman's out for the season as well so Lascelles is going to come back they're kind of just what is happening with Newcastle at the moment I, I just I massively think they're a team to target because they've got the perfect combination of poor defensive data don't really seem to know what they're doing like tactic wise is the motivation really there it's not going to get the top four this season absolutely no chance of that how's in trouble and trying new things and trying to scramble around I think you your attackers against Newcastle they are they're going to get some big, big losses. I think between now and the end of the season. The problem with that is their games are so good yeah. that most of the opponents that you would use to target them, you wouldn't want you players wouldn't get from them. them. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, but uh, th- the thing is, just as quickly as they were great and they've gone straight down, what's to say that that can switch around? Now, I know a lot of people like to put a reason behind it, like you just did there, and then you can even look at the likes of Joe Linton. I think it's probably yep. a big miss for them, but how much you want to pin on that? Like the games are good enough, you know. They have got like home Sheffield United and stuff in there, home Everton, home West Ham, like some away to Burnley. Like that could quite quickly just switch around again. I think these numbers are all so condensed down the bottom; they're all pretty much as bad as each other. And eventually, I think sort of getting the likes of well, I think a lot of people will, especially on wild card. If they go wild card thirty five, we'll have Newcastle defenders in it, and we'll be hoping that they can turn it around. I don't think it will put people off. I'll, I'll probably end up getting some. Two clean sheets in fourteen for Newcastle. <laughs> Uh, Wolves at home, which was a surprise, I I, I thought, because Wolves have been playing well. But obviously, they had the, the kind of the striker shortage, Wang out, Cunha, uh, and all that. And then Fulham at home was their last uh, clean sheet before that in game week seventeen. So yeah, quite a quite a while ago. Yeah, they ha- um, Joe Linton's a really good point. Obviously, he's been he's been injured. Attack wise, you know, Isak's really popular. Gordon, people are going to still be, are still going to be kind of hanging on to. We're going to talk a bit more about him because it's quite interesting. His 
his stats over the season. But Lascelles is popular, Andy. I'm seeing him creeping yeah. into to people's teams again. It's like we've gone back to Groundhog Day, kind of when uh, when he he, yeah. he first got in. Is he someone that you'd you'd want? I, I think if you're on wild card, he's a, he's a perfect budget you know, defender to put in, isn't he? He's got obviously the double coming up. He's got quite nice home fixtures. Uh, and like Luke said, there's nothing to say that they can't kind of have a bit of an uptick, especially with all those nice home fixtures they've got mm. coming up as well. I don't I don't think, I, I'm going to show a wild card later he's in there because he, he's just so ridiculously cheap. The thing that I find interesting is I'm seeing Trippier in a few, which I think is where it's, you're kind of, betting a little bit more that they're going to improve because you need him to obviously get yeah. those attack and returns in a few because of the price of him as well. So I found it hard to fit Trippier in with the team I wanted if I was wildcard in this week, based on the wildcard you'll see later. Uh, but I, I think Lascelles is fine, personally. I don't think he's the one that's going to be getting you the attack and returns because obviously Cher's there and Cher is much better value for you know what he does in terms of attack and returns. But yeah, I, th- I think I think the sales is fine. If you're if you're wild card in and he's your fifth defender, I think that's that's perfect. God, I hope Trippy is fit. He's yeah. <laughs> I mean, without him, I'll show you. You'll see my defense later. It is. It it couldn't be worse. If Trippy is out, then I'm in big trouble. <laughs> I think. <laughs> so yeah, need him. Need him to need him to be fit. Uh, final team on this list over the season is Luton. They are statistically the worst team defensively. They're still. Interestingly, in with a chance of, of staying up. The fixtures are are tough. They've got a decent run kind of towards the end of the season, but I think it's it's probably going to be between Luton and Forest, I'd say, for that third relegation spot. And Forest fixtures are, are nicer. So I think they probably, even with the points deduction, I think they probably got just about um, enough. But, you know, Luton are going to be fighting for their lives. Doty, I mean, what do we do with, what do we do with Doty, Luke? He's, he's been decent for us. Unlucky not to get an assist. For us, well, us free hitters and people who kind of had him, had him anyway. But probably time to sell him now, isn't it? Yeah, I don't, I don't own Doherty. I haven't had him out. So I, in fact, I had him in the free hit, but I think he was on my bench. Um, yeah, you're right. I mean, the fixtures are turning. I don't think it's like a priority one, like you just mentioned. Most defenders are pretty bad. At least he's got an attacking threat if he's fit. Yeah, I isn't. like him for that reason. I'm, I'm probably going to hold him for a while just because. Yeah, he can get that, he's... that set piece. But if I was wild card, I probably wouldn't. No, no, no. You wouldn't pick him on a wild card, would you? No. But if I, I just don't think you have to be like, I have to get him out mm. of my team. You know, he's cheap enough where you can leave him. At least he's got something about him where he could potentially just pick. Like he's already been doing, get the odd assist. But yeah, the games versus Tottenham, Arsenal and Man City, I think three of the next four. Like he's not getting a clean sheet in any of them, is he? Highly unlikely anyway. So um, Probably getting one or two minuses <laughs> across, across those. I'll be too surprised. You would have thought so. I think they're struggling um, defensively in terms of injuries, injuries as well, aren't they? Their numbers mm. are pretty bad at the moment. I don't know who they're expected to get back, but being right at the bottom of this table and then having sort of your best defenders out as well, it's not a good combo. Mm. Yeah, agreed. Uh, Con Bogler, as is it time for a like spike? Yeah, why not? If you are watching this and enjoying it, do give us a like. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. We've got just under a thousand people watching on this Wednesday night. So good to see people getting back into FPL mode, inside FPL Wee. mode, all that. We, we, we. Until I've had a beer. Uh, yeah. So if you're watching, yeah, do make sure you're uh, you're liking and subscribing. Also, if you're listening on podcast, do give us a review as well. Uh, we really appreciate uh, those. Thanks, Cole. It's nice when I can flag up a comment that isn't just me telling people to to like and subscribe. And Greg Frost with a nice segue into the next one as well. Is there a last six matches? I like when people call them slides as well, because it's like I'm doing like a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, I think we call them screens in the, uh, the content creator business. There you go. Uh, of course we have a last six. How smug was that? <laughs> so yeah, I know. <laughs> so bad. Oh dear, this is what, uh, this is, you know, I'm just getting my money from, you know, FPL Challenge and all that, trying to <laughs> keep, keep it going. I think you'll find their screams. I think sir. you'll find their <laughs> screams, Greg Frost. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, we, but we do have a last six. Of course we have a last six. Interestingly, Brighton second on this list. Stupanan is a funny one because people are still, have still got him, right? Because you, you've probably always, Me. yeah, you've, you've always got like other, <laughs> other priorities to, to make. I don't think he's a... The fixtures are awful. The fixtures at the bottom of the ticker on Scout. His attacking stats aren't, aren't, you know, aren't amazing. But I think there's a couple of home games in there. If we if we come over to the... Um, if we come over to the ticker between now and the end of the season. I mean, we've got games again. I know Brentford are coming up. I think that's it. It's the away ones, if anything. That oh, happened. no. Sorry. It's the, it's the away ones. Yeah. Bre- mm. Bre- I know we had Brent- Brentford away and Burnley away. You can play him in, in those and, and Bournemouth. 
too. So you're obviously not going to play him in Liverpool, Arsenal and Man City, but there might be opportunities to bring him in and out. Although, do you he know he's going to start? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's the issue. If you, if you said, like, he's 100% going to start the games, then I think he's an okay hold. We know he's mm. a good player, like you say, offensively can be. I know the setup's not been quite geared towards him of late, and the games, like you've mentioned, are all right. But when you add in the fact that you don't know whether the guy's going to play, and he, and he will come off the bench if he doesn't, it seems, he just becomes a terrible asset. Mm. I, I, I need to get rid of him, <laughs> I think, the, you know, the, the problem was he played 90 in that game against Fulham when we got absolutely battered and that was his first start in ages he then played against Roma you know we were 4-0 down from the from the first day okay they rested half their team and they were claiming injuries to Lukaku and Dybala and all that but Estupinan did play he was pretty good I mean that match and then we have a good win and our first clean sheet in you know in a while uh against against Forest so you've got to think he's getting his place back in the team I still think he's he's the only left back we've got in the side. Someone like Igor isn't going to come over to left back. He can maybe play Lamptey on the left, but Lamptey shouldn't really be playing on the left over Stupinan. So my, my gut instinct is between now and the end of the season, Stupinan plays when he's fit. Would I risk I mean, it? it? Would I buy him? Absolutely not. Would I hold him and play him in those away games? Maybe. It'd be lovely if that's the case. And I do think you're probably right, but we've just been here before with him. We're just, mm. He's unreadable, isn't he, Deserby, in that, in that area, at least for me. And I, I don't know whether I can trust that to be the case. Are you selling it? Um, well, I'll be wildcarding after 34. I think, I can't remember what my plan is now. I think he might go to Van Dijk or something before it. So probably, um, mm. but if not, he'll be on the bench for 34 and then a wildcard after. So I hopefully you don't have to use him. But like you've just mentioned, there's a few injuries floating about. My defence isn't looking particularly strong. I might end up having to play him away to Liverpool, which is Oof. not good. <laughs> <laughs> and you've, you've yeah. predicted a massive defeat to Liverpool. Coming to your predictions a bit, a bit later. Yeah, I was, oh I was shocked and appalled when I, when I saw that. Andy, though, Munoz, fourth yeah. Palisar in the uh, defence data over the last six. Good fixtures, some of the best on, on show. But, you know, we're, we're questioning about the new manager and, you know, he's already said he's a very attacking manager, wants to play on the front foot, all that kind of stuff that you want to hear. But also the defensive numbers are pretty good as well. Yeah, I like him. I, I, I think, um, I, genuinely, if you looked at just the fixtures, I, I actually do think Crystal Palace are probably up there in terms of the double game week 34 in terms of the fixtures. I think the fixtures are quite nice. You've got West Ham at home, Newcastle at home, two home fixtures. They don't mm. have the best of runs moving into it. They've got Man City at home and Liverpool away in 32 and 33, which obviously makes it harder to kind of invest in, in him if you have other issues in defence, which a lot of people do. Like, they're not looking at players in their defence at the moment and thinking it looks okay. I walk on it two weeks ago and my defence still looks shoddy. So <laughs> I, I think he's he's somebody you can definitely target for 34. But like you said, Crystal Palace are up there in terms of the last six. I do agree with you, though, where I still don't really know what I'm expecting from this new manager yet. I, I don't know how it's going to pan out. And we're probably not going to know that until around the time we get to the double. But yeah, I think um, I think he's I think he's a good player to target. I genuinely do. He is so attacking. And we saw it against Colombia. Like, he's got the, the, the skill to do it. So I think uh, I think he's a nice little play, personally. I love it. I love it when these streams become someone just like defending a player like like I had with Vitinho last last week or Munoz or just someone a bit different. That's what we yeah. that's what we're here for. So yeah, watch him watch him absolutely bang over the next few weeks. Uh, Luke, you're flashing up comments about Haaland during the team data defence talk, but that's fine. You wanna take this one? It was an accidental <laughs> click. Was it? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm getting old, but uh, I may as well answer it now, just to be polite. FCH Sean. Question for Luke. Uh, yeah, is it viable <laughs> to go without Haaland on free hit 34? They can see that, right? I don't need to read that out. Have I got, I've already yeah, got but for this. the Yeah, but for the podcast, it's good to read that. Oh, yeah, that's. I, I knew that. Um, <laughs> of course it is. He's got one game. You, you know, he's, he, he's got one game and there's others with two, so you can go without it, 100%. Would I want to? <laughs> Who is who's City first? got in 34? They're sp playing Spurs, aren't they? They're away to Spurs. Oh. No, no, it's Brighton. Oh, oh is, God. Is it Brighton? Of course it is. Spurs yeah. don't play in 34. Um, yeah. I mean, they don't have a double, right? I'll throw it back to you. What do you guys think? Well, the, the person to ask Andy, because he's going to be free in 34. I, I'm always to say, you've got to go with, with the players that don't have the double. Uh, that have the double, personally. So, so yeah, I, I think you do. So, no, well, no, so no Harlem for you then? Yeah, most probably, yeah. Ooh, okay. Well, I'll sound like that and remind you of that when you show your team ahead of 34 and it's like... Well, it's, 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 you do it every year. You, you free hit. Why would you free hit a player that's probably going to be, I don't know, 100 
40 50 percent owned or whatever in and that there's week there's good options when, right in, in that week yeah right? i think so you got Darwin, i'd be sure I'd, I'd be quite surprised Isaac. if i own harlan yeah no yeah not isak he hasn't got double but when are newcastle doubling do we know 37 most 37. probably okay fine. uh yeah well okay well unanimously we say don't don't go with him uh, and then I'll, I'll have him so i'll just enjoy his hat trick against Brian. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> will i enjoy that is that the right thing to say not really sure i'm really sure i will uh, team that defence yeah we talked about Palace over the last six and it's not a huge amount of surprises Brentford are, are really low down and someone asked me if I'm going to be playing Garnacho this week I have an awful awful record with playing Garnacho. I've missed his two biggest hauls uh, of the season both in good home games uh, Everton was the first and who was the most recent one uh, I can't remember who it was but yeah, I've played him against Fulham and other, other players and other teams and not really not really got anything I am currently playing him against Brentford I'm going for that fixture. I've currently got Saka on the bench, <laughs> which doesn't feel good. But in both other cases, benching um, you know benching a player for Garnacho would have been the better choice. It would have been Foden last week. Uh, someone like I think it was Darwin when when Garnacho got the two goals. Oh, it was West Ham, wasn't it? West Ham he got the two goals against them. Uh, I had him bench for that. So yeah, I'm probably I'm probably going to be playing him. Um, if you've got someone better than Saka that you could bench, go for it. But doesn't feel great, but yeah, I probably will be playing him over over Saka. Uh, only other team to mention on the over the last six is Burnley. They are improving. They're improving defensively. I don't think they're improving much attack wise. Although I do think Fafana's added quite a lot to them in, in the way I see them play. And definitely they're playing better on the on the eye test uh, as well. When I see them, there just seems to be a little bit more about them. They left it too late. They're still getting relegated, but defensively they are improving. I don't think Chelsea score five six against them this week. So, what do, you, what do you think, Luke? Are Burnley still a whipping boy? Um, I suppose they are, but mm. I mean, I, I'm with you. I don't, I don't think Chelsea would batter many teams, so I don't think it will be um, a massive score. And Burnley do generally, like you say, on the eye, they they literally play pretty well for for large parts of the game. It's just that old thing at, the, at both ends of the, of the pitch where it matters. They seem to just not be able to score and let the, let the goals in, but. Um, yeah, I don't think I'd be bringing, bringing any of their players in, put it that way. For Fafana, I think, is fine. The, the fixtures are relatively nice. It's just that we're going to be focusing our attention on teams that doubled in 34 if if you're on that pathway with your chips. So I just can't see a, a place where you'd buy any of their players, unfortunately. Like Vitinho, maybe. Maybe you could get Ooh. Vitinho. <laughs> maybe, from, maybe from 31. Um, I certainly wouldn't bring him in this week, but... Yeah, they're, they're not standing out. They're not jumping out to me, put it that way. Andy, where, Andy, where do you sit with like the teams that are fighting for something? Like a Forest, like a, a Burnley, a Luton. Are yeah. they da- more dangerous in the last stage of the season? <laughs> no, not really. I think you can still target them. I mean, they're... they're Let they're, me build they're, my narrative. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. That's it. I, I think this, you know, the, the narratives around the whole um, teams have gone on holiday and... Uh, teams are fighting for their lives and all that kind of stuff. They can fight as much as they want if they don't have the the (laughs) players against the good teams and they're not really going to be able to do much, are they? So, no, I think you still target them. I still think Burnley are there to be to be targeted as well. I think that maybe their defence has improved a little bit, but like Luke alluded to earlier, like, yes, they might be 13th on here, but they're, they're literally like a couple point zero one higher than a few of those play- a teams. So they could easily be 15th, 16th in the table. I, I, I still think you target them. Luton and Sheffield United are obviously the two teams to really target, but I think Burnley are still there for the taking. This week against Chelsea, like, you know, Palmer's up there with the captaincy option, isn't he? So, mm. and rightly so. And I think, yeah. I don't think I'd be reading too much into that with Burnley. Yeah, no, fair enough. Uh, let's take a look at some team data attack. And then, uh, Luke, can we get this comment off the screen? I can't. <laughs> it's not. It up. It's, it. it's, okay. it's not me clicking it. I promise. <laughs> I can hear your mouse going in the back as. So don't, yeah, don't come uh, for me, son. Uh, no, I'll come here. It's all right. I've sorted. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm on hand. <laughs> team data attack over the season. We've got Liverpool at the top. Them and City and, and Arsenal. I mean, three top teams in the league. Three best attacking data. Who who would have thought it? But Liverpool are, you know, over two goals expected a game. That is really high. Uh, Man City one point nine two. It's back again. It's back. Again. <laughs> that's good. Is that that's, you, Andy? That's Andy. Yeah, that was me. That was me. That was me. <laughs> that is, if, if anyone thought we couldn't banter with uh, the Video Ninja uh, dashboard chat, then how how very wrong you were. Uh, <laughs> But hey, Liverpool top Arsenal and Spurs. Uh, so yeah, Liverpool, Man City, Arsenal and Spurs. So we see some, maybe some surprises in kind of the top six with defence, but not so much in with the with the attack. But yeah, I mean, again, it's just, it's just another 
thing to say with Liverpool, isn't it? You, you've got to be buying their players. Salah's obviously so important. Do you go for a Darwin? Do you maybe grab a Diaz? Uh, I saw something saying Jota's um, targeted to be back for the Manchester United game in a few weeks. Mm. Uh, same with Trent as well. So for people considering uh, Bradley, that's from the Anfield Anfield Rap uh, on Twitter. So you know, there's a few weeks to maybe you know consider them. But I think Darwin and Salah are obviously the the main ones to to get. What do you think with Man City though? Because Man City obviously second. We haven't really spoken about them too much yet. They are approaching that point of the season when they just go on a run and just win every game. You know, they've got a massive game against Arsenal coming, uh, and then some really winnable wins, uh, winnable games. Are we are we kind of going to be not looking at their players because we're going to be focusing on the on, on the doubles in thirty four? Andy, what about Foden? I mean, is Foden yeah. a sell? Because you know, I'm not seeing him on wildcard teams, for example. I know. I well, so for instance, I wildcarded two weeks ago. I didn't have Foden in. People were going mad that I didn't have Foden in, saying, you know, it's a season of his life. How can't you have Foden? But then all of a sudden he's he's now sellable and people mm. are not putting him in their wildcards. I think you can go without him until what well, after thirty four probably. They do have beautiful fixtures from thirty two onwards, and obviously they've got the double in thirty seven. But there's just other players you're going to want to have because of those double game weeks and. Defence seems an absolute minefield at the moment, especially with the injuries they've got as well. Obviously, Stones went off. I think Akanji went off as well midweek. So that doesn't help them. I'm not sure what the prognosis is on those guys. But everybody's going to have Haaland and those midfield spots seem seem really tough to kind of go with. So if you are wildcarding or whatever it is you're doing, I, I think Foden's a tough one. If you've still got him, obviously you're not looking to, to sell him that quickly, I wouldn't have thought. But yeah, if you're wildcarding, I don't see many people going for him on the wild card. But after 34, I think he'd be he'd be coming back into teams then. It's interesting one with Foden, isn't it, Luke? Because you've got two kind of ways of looking at it. You've got one is that people are selling him, so it becomes like a bit of a differential, like in some mini leagues, or obviously his overall ownership is going to remain really high, but in, in some leagues, he's going to be a bit of a differential for you. But on the other side, the fixtures aren't the best. I mean, obviously there's a Luton at home game in 33, but then the others, I mean, are a bit tough. You know, Arsenal, Villa, Crystal Palace away. We've seen they've got some pretty good defensive data. Same with Forest as well in 35. So do you move away from him and, and try and target someone else? Foden to Havertz, for example. <laughs> is that, you know, is that an easy move? Uh, I don't know about that one, but... Um, <laughs> Damn it, yeah. why won't someone buy Havertz? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think Havertz is a decent pick. I think for free hit 34, if Havertz is still in and around being the centre forward at that point, then he's definitely... I can't wait for Andy to own Havertz in 34. <laughs> <laughs> instead, of, instead of Haaland. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Can't wait. Um, I think with Foden, it, Andy summed it up really. He's kind of like... Um, you don't really need to have any plan for him, really. It's fine to hold. It's fine to sell. Like If you were to do that, buy, sell, marry, snog, whatever the hell it is, he, <laughs> he, he, he would tick all of those boxes, wouldn't he? What were you doing with girls growing up? <laughs> <laughs> buy, sell, marry, or snog? Well. <laughs> <laughs> so what, was there another option? Ugh. I can't remember the third one. Andy, can you remind me? Avoid. Of the push, marry, uh, avoid. avoid. Of yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Or, or, or shag marry kill that was the that's the, what the, I was looking more, for yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I definitely would do that with Foden by the way I love the guy um, what shag yeah, marry and kill him <laughs> all, all of the above <laughs> all of the yeah. all of the above <laughs> Uh, I just think that you can easily hold him. Like obviously this week is not a great game, but it's a home game. He's, he's going to play, isn't he? Um, I suppose moving forward, the issue is the Luton game's right between those two Madrid games, and you think if there's any game that might have a little bit of rotation in it, um, you know that is a game where he could maybe miss out, and then suddenly it doesn't look that good because you've got Villa, Palace, and then you've got the away Spurs game rather than a double, and then you know as we go into, I was listening to Planet FPL um, to do with Sky actually, but some of the games that could come later after 34 and especially around if they're still in all the competitions, their scheduling could get crazy in terms of the gaps between the games. And that's always the worry with Man City. I know Foden's very likely to continue playing. Um, he's playing so well. Um, he's also fit and able to do it. But I do not believe that Foden will play every single Premier League game from now to the end of the season. He's going to miss one at some point, in my in my opinion. And um, that's the risk you run when there are other options, right? So, yeah, he ticks all the boxes. Mm. I think you can... You can do whatever you want with him, and I wouldn't argue. Yeah, nice run-up. I, I think he starts every game. I don't think he's going to start every game. I mean, we've seen it in Man City in previous seasons where even when the Premier League is on the line, they will rotate in the Premier League if it's, you know, around the Champions League game. Good news, everyone. We have the real FPL Harry in the really? chat. How do I know that it's the real FPL Harry? Because he's making a Ben Me joke straight away. So, obviously, it's a... 
it's him. Hi, Harry. Don't mention Saka or that he's uh, he's injured or anything like that because people will kick off. Uh, Spurs on the attack data. They're fourth um, over the, over the season. Uh, next four are the best in the in the league as well. One point zero one. We have them down four. Because it's Luton at home in the next game. It's an interesting decision to make. If like you mentioned earlier, Andy, if you're wild carding this week, but then there's no free hit chip, for example, you're loading up on your Spurs players, and obviously they have the blank in thirty four. Then they have the um, you know the the games come in. It's uh, yeah, because you want them, you want them for the next next couple. Like I'm I'm seeing people yeah. who've loaded up on Madison. Son and, and Poro, for example, I've only got one of those, and I'm thinking, oh, that, they're gonna they're gonna do so well over the next few weeks. Yeah, I think it's it's just making sure you have that plan for for game week 34, and it it, it, it just kind of narrows your moves because if you're if you're gonna have double Spurs or you're gonna have triple Spurs and target these fixtures, which is fair enough, it's just knowing that you're going to have to sell one of them and then bring them back after the double game week. Mm. Or you're going to be benching all three of them in the double game week. So it's just making sure you you know what your options are moving forward. I do think I don't think I'd be going with double defense. I don't think I'd be going like say Poro a doggy and then a Son. I think Son is somebody you've got to have moving forward because of the penalties. But then obviously he's moving out to the left potentially if Richarlison's back. I think Richarlison's a nice little shout. I think Madison's obviously there. I'm a bit cooler on Madison than a lot of people are, but I think Richarlison's a nice shout, especially if he is playing up top still and uh, he's he's obviously a midfielder in the game. I've got a doggy over Poro. I think either of those is fine moving forward. But it is, if you don't have that free hit, just know what you're doing in 34. That That's obviously the biggest thing because you're either selling one and then bringing them back or you're benching all three. Mm. Richarlison's a shout, actually. I mean, obviously, you want to see him kind of coming back into the into the team. To know, but you, you've got to think with, with him losing 3-0 to Fulham, mm. he's going to make some changes and surely Richarlison being put back into the side is going to be number one. I would Because it's not really a huge amount of other changes he can... He can make. They obviously need Van der Ven back. You know, they, they can play around with Werner and Brennan Johnson and all that. But I think I think I think Richarlison comes back in this week for Luton. So yeah, I think that's a, that's a that is a pretty uh, a pretty nice pick. Uh, only other team I want to mention here is Palace. They're down in 18th. We, we mentioned Eze already on this stream. Hard to know who else that you could get. At least if he's fit, maybe. Um, but Eze's got a good double and is is fun. Um, but over the season, uh, they're down in 18th. Um, over the last six, they're in 18th. So not exactly a huge consistent. improvement. Yeah, consistent, exactly, but not consistent necessarily in the in the right way. Uh, just to mention some of the other teams that we've we kind of mentioned, Arsenal, Liverpool over the last six, uh, first and second, Man City a third. Fulham are an interesting one, though. And we haven't really spoken about Muniz yet, Luke. Obviously, he's a good player. He's got, what, seven returns in seven or, or something ridiculous like that. I'm seeing him in wildcard drafts, obviously, but I can also see why people are avoiding him because they're going for for players with double game makes. Yeah, that's his. That's the Achilles heel, isn't it? The fixtures I think are it, so good though for Fulham. So yeah. Good. Well, his price is really good as well. Um, Sheffield United, could, Forest, Newcastle, West Ham, mm, and then Palace, I think, Brentford, um, Luton in the final in the final four. I think Andy. I don't know whether he's got him in his team, but we were looking at maybe if you had a wild card this week and. You didn't have any other chips to navigate any other weeks. He's the kind of player that might fit that bill where you could just have him in there and just leave him now for the end of the season. I know that Jimenez is back. They've also got Broha there. I can't see them um, starting ahead of him, to be honest, the way he's playing. But they, they might take minutes off of him in the last sort of 10, 20 minutes. Broja, I don't even think Broja is a factor. No, pro- pro- probably not. But um, I suppose at least him in, in the squad the day, right? in their last game. <laughs> no, no, I did see that. But him and his came on for him. I think he will sort of miss the odd ten. Not that that's a problem, but um, it's probably just worth thinking about. He might get eighty minutes in most games, but I think he's a fine option. It's just that those forward spots are quite mm. hard to to sort of dedicate to him because we, you're probably going to end up have a Harlan throughout this period, right? Most people are going to have that. A lot of people are going to be looking at the likes of Darwin Nunes, and then you've got Solanke, who's just a given. You've still got Watkins, who people might sell, but that's already three or four names, and then you're starting to wonder where you can get him in. Maybe mm. we get Jackson later on after 34. And Isak, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you've got Isak who can obviously come in as well, so it's just where do you fit him in? But I don't I don't think it's a terrible pick at all. Like, yeah, is it, Fulham are playing well, they've got decent games, and he's a viable option for sure. He's going to hurt this week, not owning him, because Sheffield United, we know what they're like at home, conceding goals. 
it's it's just such a nice fixture, and I'm I'm not going to have him. Uh, and I think a lot of you people, can get him an FPL challenge as I can. Do you know what? And I think I probably would because he's four point six million on FPL challenge, and he should be about thirteen. But yeah, that's it about that. The uh, the better. Uh, only other team before we fight, we we spent ages on team team data, but there was there. I think there is some quite interesting stuff that that can help people plan. Uh, but the only other team I want to mention is Newcastle. Uh, over the last six, they're down in 15th as well. So we've seen their defence has, has obviously been poor. But in terms of creating chances, uh, they've struggled as well. Gordon's popular. Trippier's going to be popular if he's fit. Um, Isak's obviously popular up top. I'm seeing him quite a few wild cards as well. Andy, slight worry. I mean, you're Gordon's biggest fan. He's been, been great for you this season. I've bought him, I've bought him like four times this year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, I, the, Wait the you one see thing his I'll stats. Say, they're awful. The, over the, last six. the one thing I will say about Gordon, though, is in the next four, he's got three home yeah. fixtures. And he always returns at home. <laughs> like, it's ridiculous how consistent he is returning at home. So, he's the, obviously, he's not on pens or that kind of stuff. But um, he does just seem to get returns at home. And he is he is one of their main attacking threats. I know you, you're going to obviously show up where his, his stats are gone recently. But, um, yeah, it's interesting. I've had a lot of um, kind of inner discussions with me when I was thinking about the wild card in terms of do I go for Gordon or Garnacho if you were wild card in this week? And it, it was quite tricky between the two of them. I went for Garnacho in the end, but I think Gordon is a great shout with those home fixtures coming up. Imagine that question at the start of the season. <laughs> Gordon or Garnacho? Yeah, I know. Be, yeah, be wondering. I mean, look, you're, you know, you, you talk about variants, you talk about all these things. What is going on with Gordon's home form versus away form? Why is he so, well, why is he so good at home? Yeah, well, you've said it right there. I think next season you could it could be totally the opposite way. It, <laughs> okay. it really could. I mean, we've seen it before, haven't? Haven't we had it where like Bowen only scored away or something yep. or on it, and then it switched around. Um, he got hat trick you know, at home to Brentford. Yep. Yeah, it just depends how long you look at these things. Generally, players are going to return more points at home than they are away because teams perform better at home than they do away. We know that. Um, but yeah, I think over a longer period, it'll it'll stretch itself out. There's not voodoo going on here, in my opinion, anyway. Well, what's happened? You, you were always talking about voodoo in previous <laughs> years. <laughs> yeah, of course I was. Yeah, that's how I used to pick my players. <laughs> Let's go with some player stats then. Let's just really quickly touch on John goalkeepers. If you've got Kaminsky, he is statistically over the season the worst goalkeeper um, for, for a lot of things. But in terms of points per 90, he is, he is statistically the, the worst. Uh, Flecken, he was obviously bought by quite a few people. Uh, he's 2.9 compared to Kaminsky's 2.4. He's down in 23rd. And Petrovic as well. You know, a lot of people going for him. But his points return since he's been in the team of 3.2 is nine, puts him 19th. There isn't a lot in it between a lot of these a lot of these goalkeepers. I mean, and also you can't, it's hard to judge goalkeepers on these. I mean, Vicario has been arguably, you know, goalkeeper of the season uh, this year. And he's he's an 18th in terms of FPL points, uh, for example. Um, but yeah, it's, it's hard to know kind of what goalkeeper to go for. I still like Neto. He's an 11, 3.6. I think Pickford is the one I'd go for if I was wildcarding uh, this week. He's in 12, 3.6. And the top uh, performing goalkeeper is Allison with 4.1, level with Ariola. Cannot, I cannot overstate my dislike for Ariola. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 4.1 million. I just ignored him and he's just been brilliant. Is it this... I think it's... Oh, Corey, Sorry, Corey, on, No, you go on, mate. Uh, I was going to say it's interesting seeing Kelleher in sixth because yeah. obviously Alisson there with 4.1 points per 90. Benched Kelleher him for his big <laughs> I think I think Kelleher... I, I haven't actually... I was meant to do it before I came on. I haven't seen an actual update on when Alisson's supposed to be back. But Kelleher, I'm seeing in a lot of wildcard teams because obviously if people are thinking of bench boosting in 34, it's quite nice to go with, say, Kelleher and Petrovic for the prices as well. So I think Kelleher is is a really good shout. It just depends on when Alisson's back. But yeah, I do like it. I didn't see an update from Anfield Rap on Kelleher. Mm. Uh, whether you know whether he doesn't know, whether Klopp wasn't asked or whatever, it's, it's hard to know. But from that, I guess maybe it's not imminent. Like. I the, they, the last update I thought I saw was that he's he should play a part towards the end of the season. I think it was as generic yeah. as that. Okay, so um, en end of the month, potentially, end of April, could be. Yeah, who, who knows? Yeah. Um, yeah, I suppose you, you don't pick him if you need him to stay for the whole season. But if you don't, then that's fine. If you're wildcard in 35, it looks like you'll probably get away with it. So yeah. you could do. Yep. Right, defenders. There, we've got uh, some of these to talk about. Another one, mate of yours, Andy. Uh, yeah. old Connor Got a lot Bradley. Of mates this year. You have. You have a good season. <laughs> yeah. It's highly surprising. Yeah. Uh, Connor Bradley's in sixth. 
XJ 1.9 is 0.3. It's not exactly massive, but it was he got the huge haul. Um, you know, again, who was it against Chelsea? Was it? Who did he get the 24 mm. points against or whatever it was? Mm, I don't know. Chelsea, someone. Well, someone's going to know. Someone the in chat. the chat will know. Yeah, of course they will. Yeah. So, like FPL quiz is treated like that. But obviously, had, a, had the big haul against them. <laughs> we think Trent's going to be back in and around that Manchester United game. But it's good fixtures for Liverpool, even without that. Obviously, it's Sheffield United coming. He, yeah. He's still a bit tempting, isn't he? It was Chelsea as, by the way. It's Chelsea, there you go. Nice. Oh, yeah. Um, so Luke wins the quiz. Uh, that is uh, <laughs> what, looking it up. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, no, I, I think I think Bradley's a good shout for the next couple of weeks. I, I think I prefer to go Kelleher over Bradley myself. I, th- I, I haven't owned Bradley for a few weeks. Obviously, you know he's been great fun to own at times. I think I, I got one one nice return out of him, and that was it. The fixtures are nice moving forward, but I want to know that he was going to play in that double game week. Mm. I think Robertson went off midweek, but it doesn't sound like it's going to be as bad as it, it, it as people thought, which was interesting. He's but, a bit of a risk yeah. anyway, though, isn't he, Robertson? Because it's obviously Simicas, yeah. Gomez, all, all kind of slotting in. Yeah, I think I think Luke mentioned earlier that I, I think you'd end up going Van Dyke for the certainty mm. and the fact that you want them for that double game week. And of course, you'd look at them and think if Bradley, like you could get to thirty four and Trent played in thirty three, and like you've got a player there that you know is going to be tough to replace. So I I I, I get it. But I think I I don't think I'd be going for Bradley now personally. Yeah, Luke, agree with that. Yeah, completely agree. I think in nearly all the doubles that Liverpool have had in recent memory, even when Robertson has has looked absolutely nailed, he ends up missing one as well. It just seems to be a pattern that he misses one of the games. So I, I wouldn't risk it. I just think Van Dijk's there, and it's he's not so expensive that it's um it's an issue. But I suppose if you were looking to cut money to afford other people, you could maybe chance Bradley, depending on the updates with Trent, right, and then fix it afterwards. Um, but yeah, it's, it's Van Dyke. I don't I certainly don't trust Canati to even stay fit, even if he was um, sort of back in the team and playing. So yeah, I agree. I think um, if, if you're if you're if you're wild carding and you're looking at like someone like the Cells, I think you could maybe take a bit of a punt on Bradley. I mean, even if Trent comes back into the team, the way Bradley's been playing, it could even be he carries on playing and they move Trent into yeah. that into that midfield. You could role. do, but it's it's just a little bit. You're just really it is. hoping on things that are out of your Absolutely. control, aren't but, you? But, but you would get Brighton and Sheffield United from Bradley, which is you know four point one million or whatever it is. It might, like, like if you, if you go and look at Sells or Cabore or someone, like are you really going to get a lot of points from them anyway. You could you could hit a big haul from Bradley in in one of those next two. You could, no but I just I was no just going to say the Van Dijk hits halls yeah. as well, doesn't he? Van Dijk can score yeah. from corners. Like you, you could easily just have more of an attacking threat than Bradley or at least in output over With my defence, anyway. I can't get Bradley because it would be ridiculous. I'd obviously go for Van Dijk. But if, you, if you're if you and you've got a decent four, you could maybe take a punt on him. Yeah. Uh, there was somebody in the chat, by the way, I think it was William Brownlee. I know you keep track of the super chats, but yeah, he yeah. was just saying we missed his. Yeah, but I'm sure you've got kept track of I've it. got. Don't worry, William, I've got you pinned. Uh, your question was on midfielders and we're on defenders. As soon as we get to midfielders... We'll uh, we'll take your super chat and, and answer that. And anything that kind of breaks the flow, I tend to pin, and then we we take a bit later on in the stream or, or at the end. If it's like a really specific team question, we normally take them at the end. Uh, if they fit into another section, a bit better, we'll take it then. But we will, I promise, we will answer it uh, as we go. Uh, Gusto and Aid Nori, we've already kind of talked about. We think they're both good picks going forward. Don't think there's any real threat of Reese James coming back to to knock Gusto out. Aid Nori's got a good double, very attacking. Uh, maybe not kind of born out from these stats, but I mean, I watched that that Coventry game. He was like yeah. a striker in in the match. Very very yeah. exciting. Uh, so yeah, good pick. Kiwi, all we've talked about as well. He's down in thirty third. Although there's not much in it between a lot of these these defenders. It's it's all just pot luck as to who pops up with a goal or an assist. Uh, and then Robinson as well. Surprisingly to see though, he's down in forty second, zero point one four. I mean, I, again, I, I don't think the Fulham defenders are bad picks. With the fixtures they've got, and with Sheffield United coming, Robinson or, or Castagna has been great for us in previous seasons as well. I don't really mind those. Um, defenders are so I, I find defenders so hard this season to know who to who to yeah. get. The, they're fine picks, but if anyone's got in the position where they're just they've got a free transfer to use on one defender to another in this game week, they are in a very privileged position. Mm. Like most people are scrambling around if they're not wildcarding for the likes of Salah and Darwin and people like that. But that I, I'm making we... a defensive move. I've, I've, I've got to. I, I, Salah's a luxury. I can't even get anywhere near at the moment. Right. It's, it's all about it's all about trying to sort my defence out. If Trippier's fit, then it's a bit better for me. But if he's not, then, yeah, like I said, uh, the issues. And it might even be a Fulham defender that, that comes in. Uh, over the last six, Maguire. Look at that. Top of the pile. 0.71. Goal and an assist. Still 
somehow keeping his place in the England squad <laughs> as well. I, I watched that Brazil game and I just thought, I mean, no disrespect to Maguire, but is that really the best we've got at centre back? You know, leave him alone. He's all right. He's all right, but <laughs> he was made to look a bit ponderous, shall we say, at times. In that match. We're not exactly blessed at centre back. Well, no, that's what I mean. Yeah, he did. That's the problem. He did better than Dunk, didn't he? Well, do you know what? Lewis Dunk should not be in the England squad. And no, I, and exactly. I, I I'm glad as, you said I'm that. as biased as it comes, but he's just not really. He, he's been an amazing player for us. Like you know, our captain. He's he's been in the lower leagues with us. He's he's developed so much, but he he's not an international standard centre back. Well, I've got a soft spot for Dunk, but I've that's because so-, he's so good. He's so good in Sky, you see. So yeah. I kind of like him. I just, I just don't, I just don't think he's 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 really good enough to be starting for England. Um, but then again, we haven't got a lot of options. And St- Stones is injured as well, isn't it? I saw he he went in off. Shock. Yeah, so he, he might be out. So who, the, the the partnership with um with Maguire is is open. It's up for grabs. Yeah, I haven't watched any of the games, but apparently Conta played well, didn't he? We're going on a massive tangent, aren't we? But I think yeah. Conta's pretty much got to go at this point. Yeah. Concert's a good chat, but he's, he's playing at right back for Villa. Yeah, who knows? Mm. Uh, a lot of the other players I've highlighted here again, we've already mentioned. We've eight Norries in ninth. His over the last six, those uh, attacking stats have increased, which maps up to what we've what we've seen. Uh, Bradley 0.21. We've talked about him. Gusto's in 20th, 0.18. Slight increases for these players. What I did want to point out though was Destiny and Porro over the last six. I couldn't believe it when they weren't in the top. 10 top 20 top 30 you gotta go down to 58th to find a dogey 0.09 and poro even further down 61st 0.08 it's a bit of a concern isn't it andy uh, yeah i suppose in a little bit i mean you, you've just got to look at like the heat maps of both of them to realize how far attacking they are but it's yeah obviously the uh it's gone down a little bit in terms of their xgi it's an interesting one with Spurs because I can always look at Spurs and think I want to own some of their attacking players. And mm. I feel like a doggy and Poro are two of those, but it, yeah, I, I, I think they're fine moving forward because obviously they've got the, um, the doubles and they've got the nice fixtures. So hopefully with the nice fixtures, they get a bit of a, an uptick in those, in those stats, if that makes sense. But yeah, it's, it's interesting to see them quite as far down as they are. Like they're lower down than Van Heck, for instance, which mm. is obviously interesting, but across six weeks, that can be just one, kind of goal line header that's cleared off and mm. and it kind of changes quite quickly. Yeah, I think just because you, you haven't really got the clean sheets with them, because obviously Van der Ven's out, I think he's still flagged, isn't he? We don't know when he's when he's going to yeah. be back. Um, so you say he... that, but and I see Spurs get a lot of hate for the fact they don't get that many clean sheets, but they've done all right clean sheets across the season. There's a lot of noise in clean sheets. You, you need a lot of luck to get a clean sheet, <laughs> basically. I mean, just look at Man City for like seasons on end. The data is incredible. If you're paying then, six million for Porro, though, you need yeah, you need, some, you need some clean sheets from him, surely. Yeah, but who are you getting clean sheets from that you're paying six million from? The, the, all the best defenders, you are still risking clean sheets at around that price. Trippier, Trent, everyone like it's been the same all season. I I wouldn't pay six million for Porro now, but I think that two in twelve but, clean sheets, I suppose. I just think they get a little bit too much hate for their clean sheets. I, I, I can't remember what the tally is, but I think they're doing like mid table. Uh, that they're doing okay for clean sheets. And it, doesn't, it doesn't be many across the board, to be fair. No, and yeah. I think the fixtures are there where it could happen. And I think with Spurs, they are a team that I like having defenders from teams where, although they haven't showed it recently, they can turn up, turn up and just absolutely dominate a mm. team for periods. And you know how good you are offensively and how dominating you are in, in the game can have an impact on the clean sheets, right? Because the opponent can't get near the goal. I do agree that having the fastest defender out makes a big difference because every time they get counted on, he's just unreal, yeah. isn't he? Um, but yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they lucked into a few, put it that way, like which they've done all season. Take a shot every time they say clean sheets, says Andy Rush. <laughs> 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 we did say it a lot during that section. We better quickly move over to midfielders. I guess the big question this week for a lot of people is is over Salah, who we have touched on as, as we've gone. You've both got him in already. I'm not going to get him this week. I'm. I think there's there's good enough captain options in Son and Palmer to not worry too much about the the captains, uh, the captain kind of armbands with that. I think Brighton were a funny team. We we could, you know, we we had two good results. Now we could go and, and cause some problems for Liverpool. We will still concede some goals, but do I think Salah is like overwhelmingly like better than than Son and Palmer? Not really. I know a lot of people disagree with that though. You've obviously both moved for him early are you capturing him Andy I haven't got him yet 
Uh, so I'm I'm waiting to get him, but that is the move I'm going to do. You're going to you're going to get him there, right? Oh yeah, I'm going to get him. Yeah, yeah and I'm going to captain him. I think. Uh, I, I I tweeted today saying that it's going to be interesting actually because I think there is a little bit of a clamour for Salah, and some people aren't going to be able to get him. And there almost is that kind of in the back of my head thinking, I'm going to get him and I'm going to captain him. And it's probably going to be bloody Son that, that gets the haul. And obviously I, I so. have him anyway. <laughs> but I'm assuming Son's going to be over 100% EO. Mm. Because That'll be he's low. Be the most, that's what I mean. And yeah. it's like it's interesting in terms of that kind of a play. Like, do you just captain Son and own and Salah's enough? Mm. But I know you absolutely hate that kind of play. But <laughs> I, I think Salah, you know, if, if you can get to Salah this week... I, I think you do with the, with the next you know two fixtures Brighton and, and Sheffield United. I know you said Brighton could be a funny team, but you're expecting Liverpool to score what four, five, six goals in those two fixtures, not each you know across mm. those two fixtures. So yeah, I mean Luke's expecting it in just this game. So I'm uh, <laughs> yeah. I think Salah Salah is for me he's he's clear captain personally, but. I'm I still, think it is close, but I think it's clear. I'm still bitter about Salah's last game against Brighton when he was completely anonymous in that game. Yeah, and I know, then, yeah. And then got a penalty and I think his stupid man fell over and Salah just went round him and, and just slotted in. But oh, he, he I didn't catch him in that. And uh, yeah, he was... he was. I mean, that, that was actually... Salah, that's been selling quite a few games this season. Stuck out on the right, not really looking that effective. And then boom, there he is with, with a goal or, or two. Are you captaining him, Luke? I'm probably going to captain Sun, even though I own Salah. Really? Okay, good. That's that's yeah. good to hear. Yep. It's nothing to do with EO. You know, I don't pay any attention to that. It's just that I mean, I follow. If you don't follow him already, Rob FPL. Uh, sorry, Rob T FPL yeah. on Twitter does a lot of spread X um, predictions. Where he uses all the data and produces these wonderful graphics. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I use that to make the decisions quite a lot of the time. And Tottenham are expected to score more goals this week. And um, you know, Sun and Salah are as individual players and sort of their potential and goal scoring, you'd, you'd say Salah is above some, but it's not to a massive extent. It's more to do with the fact that can I see Luton turning up and, and actually doing anything away to Spurs? I just can't see it. Whereas with Brighton, I don't think it will happen, but I think there's always a chance, right? They have got good enough players. They have managed, like you said before, they, they can turn out performances. So it's not so much the players I'm comparing. It's just the fixture. I think the fixture is much better for Spurs. And mm. I just think that... Um, yeah, Sun's Sun's fine, and I think he's he's higher on the model as well as. So I'll be honest and say that's another reason there why I might pick him. Not yeah. by much. I think anything can happen in this week. I mean, there's also Palmer to throw in the mix, right? I think he's a fantastic pick this week as well as a captain. So um, variants will decide it in the end, but I think um, Sun is probably the one I'll end up going with. I mean, even does, if it's on the left, he's up against Kabore. It's not exactly a bad match. I was yeah. just about to say that. Does that worry either of you if, if Richarlison really. does start up top? I don't think it matters that much. He's yeah. still on penalties, isn't he? He's still probably going to see most of the minutes. Richarlison is unlikely to play 90 even if he started. And I think too much is... I think it's exaggerated how much of an effect it is, whether he's centre forward or left, because sometimes I hear he's better on the left and they get more chances there and then it switches around depending on what's happened. And yeah, I'm not too bothered about that, to be honest with you. The thing is, we, we know Son's good through the middle, but you sometimes see, like Gordon, for example, has played through the middle for Newcastle. And when yeah. he does, you, you're thinking, actually, I'd rather have him on the left. Well, so, well, Sal, yeah. Salah's, on the, what, Salah's on the wing. Yeah. Darwin Nunes will be up front. Son's, Son's won the golden boot. Playing off on the wing, yeah. you know, playing from, from. I'm not denying it can make a difference, but no one can say for sure how that game will go and how many minutes will play in the position. And ultimately, even at the left wing, this is Son, one of the best finishers around. If he gets the opportunities, mm. he can bang a goal. And he'll, he'll get opportunities, won't he? Uh, I think we're losing the audience, everyone, because everyone has now turned to talking about my beard and haircut. <laughs> Samumin saying I like as his new haircut. It takes years off him. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ben Allen just says nice little beard that's uh, a little bit condescending but also quite nice J77lag says Manscaped that beard yes Manscaped I will say do do beard grooming products so head to manscaped.uk uh, and use the code don't just, blackbox do you just use the same shaver for both mate Oh no no no, no. And. no okay I'll just I'll just, I'll just ask him I don't know absolutely not no you got you use the code blackbox get yourself a beard trimmer and the ball shaver. <laughs> Don't Lovely. use don't don't use both at once. Oh, <laughs> absolutely not. Uh, other players we want to mention here. Uh, I mentioned Anthony Gordon where he was. Well, he's down in fortieth for midfielders uh, at zero point four two um, over the season. Um, but over the last six, Anthony Gordon is seventy third, zero point two three. So his half is xgi xgi non penalty per ninety um, over that time. Uh, Palmer's down in thirty fourth as well. Over the last six, which I thought was was quite low, 0.44. That's still not bad, though. I think over the season he's 0.54, so it's not as big a drop, for example, as we saw with with Gordon. But I mean, it's not enough to worry you ahead of Burnley at home. 
uh, but it's, it's right there. Uh, Havertz, though, I mean, Havertz is so impressive. Over the season, uh, it's kind of like 0.4. Over the last six, 0.66. So he's he's on the up, as, as Luke said, he's playing basically up front in, in every match uh, for Arsenal. I feel like his kind of reputation precedes him because if, if we had an out-of-position player playing for Arsenal in most matches, if it was Trossard, for example, and Trossard was like nailed on and playing up front every match, people would go mad for him. I think it, tempered. I think it's because Jesus is back now, isn't it? And he came off the bench and he was impressive oh. again. I just think there's only a matter, and, and he can play midfield as well or just be on the bench, isn't it? Can't he? So it's, it is a risk no matter how you look at it. Do you, he's not going to bench Havertz. Havertz has been like Arteta's project. I don't think he will bench him, season, but I do they? think Jesus will take minutes and, and possibly games off of him. I don't see how you keep him on the bench completely. I thought Jesus was very impressive when he came on the other day. <laughs> Flapjack in the chat. We've got some good names in the chat, by the way. Nigel the Crabs finally joined. Uh, <laughs> good, good to see you. We've got uh, Flapjack. We've got Harry. We've got Focal uh, as well. Some of our regulars, you know, Ben, Greg, uh, M. Darrowell, our first ever Black Box tier, a uh, Godfather tier member as well. So yeah, thanks everyone for, for joining in. Again, we're over a thousand people watching. Um, it's uh, it's great to, to to see you all. Any other mids you two want to talk about? Bryn Larson. Uh, what a buy. Oof, there he is in fifteenth. <laughs> <laughs> He was I, mean, the one. I, I, I suppose Eze in sixth when we were uh, looking at the, the double mm. game week and Bloody Alanga in eighth who's still not getting any points even you're, though you're I own him at the moment. Week, so. you? You're playing him. Yep. Yeah, Crystal Palace at home, isn't it? I think it is. Mm. Uh, can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll be playing him. He's got a hole in him somewhere. So hopefully it just catches up with him all these stats he's, uh, he's accumulating. Yeah. I... <laughs> I, I can't believe that because Elanga, you watch him every every week, you think he's going to get something, and then last last week was it? If that it just that one goal, bloody Gibbs White, I'm still. Not I think there's him. a player. Is he not? I can't see him on the list. That could be an option, but um, he's not on there. Ooh. That's back. Oh, anyone guess? He's he's back now. He's back. I should now. give it away. Probably probably the best player in the whole league before he went away. Come on. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm, the my midfielder who scored a ridiculous amount of points, and if you didn't own him, it probably ended your season. And Bumo. Oh, well, right. There we are. Oh. <laughs> Brentford have got decent games. Oh, He's God. Good... Yeah, he. sorry, he is on here. He's fourth over the season, ah, 4.7. Yep. I, I, again, we've discussed it with the doubles and the way it works. And yeah, he's, prob he's probably, look, well, he has lost penalties to Tony now, hasn't he? But he still, his non-penalty data, as you can see, is still fantastic. So you could argue he doesn't need those penalties and the games are there. So I think he's still a good option. It's just one that we probably won't go to because of the doubles. People in the chat were way ahead of us, Luke. Yeah. People were saying in Bombos, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, me and I was just like, huh? <laughs> was, I, I was thinking like there. Salah, Foden, ever be now. I can't remember who it was. And Bumo is so dead to me. I can't even bring myself to think about him. I, I, did, I owned him. I've owned him for like three weeks. He blanked in two and got injured in the third. Yeah, That's not just, ideal. Oh, but look season. how high he is. Higher than Sun over the, that know. period. You know, almost close to Salah. You're not, not going to go for him, are you? <laughs> well, like I say, I, I don't see how I can do it, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if he just starts churning out points again. Webby says, as maybe go Kai at the start of the season over in Bomo. Well, I'm going to do the same now. Go for Havertz over in Bomo. <laughs> now, don't listen to Luke. Don't know, don't know uh, what to be about. fair, I had Havertz as well at the beginning of the season, and that was tragic for the first three weeks. He did nothing. Did, did you own it? You actually went for him? Yeah, I had him for the first three weeks because he was playing up front for Arsenal, like you say, yeah. and it just didn't work. I talked him up all pre-season and didn't go for him. <laughs> Went for Richarlison instead. He was equally uh, equally useless. <laughs> uh, I would apologies, Nigel the Crab. Nigel was our first Godfather tier member, not M. Darrowell. Uh, I just remember M. Darrowell because he was like mysterious Darrowell because no one knew what the M stood for. But yeah, sorry, Nigel, you are uh, you are number one. Uh, forwards. Let's talk about some of these. I think the forward decision is is quite interesting. Uh, we've got quite a variety, even with our teams going forward. Andy, you've got Tony, for example, and probably no plans to to get rid of him like imminently. You've got Muniz, Isak is pop is popular. You've got Nunes, you've got Haaland, you've got Watkins. Quite a few. Easy question for you, Luke. Top three. What for the whole season? Yeah. To pick now. Yep. Top three forward point scorers we've done in the season. Go. Mm, Haaland, Nunes. And, Nunes uh, is an interesting one. Yeah, with data's there, if he gets the games, it suggests you should get it. Um, I don't know who the third one is. 
Um, you can't, you, you can't. That's not an answer, I'm afraid. Gonna, gonna, <laughs> need, gonna need to push you. Most people would probably still say Watkins, despite the games, right? But Solanke, I'm, another one I have mentioned. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe, maybe we go Isak if he can stay fit. But I just don't have any confidence that he actually stays fit. Mm. Andy, uh, top three. I mean, the top two. I think it's probably going to be the same for everybody. Yeah, Harlan and Nunes, and then it's who the third person is. I, I, I don't know. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm going to stick my neck on the line and say that it's going to be Nicholas Jackson and see what happens. <laughs> How yeah, things I don't, I just think, in a few weeks. I know. I, it's just one of those ones where it's like, you know, everybody laughs at it and then everybody, you know, in six weeks' time is like, oh, everybody knew Jackson had the stats. Like it's you like, did. Like you did when I suggested him. Here we go. Oh, God. Do you know what? I'm yeah. Never, all I'm right. Never, I'm yeah. Never, I'm never letting it go. That is ever. a very good point, as he was slagging off Jackson. And now he's Absolutely. all over. Absolutely. I know. <laughs> Timo Werner, oh. number one forward, now the end of the season. You heard it here first. <laughs> Brilliant. No, yeah, so there, there you go. I'm going to go with Jackson. Boom. I'm go with Jackson. I think I'd go... I don't well, Tony's know. a shout as well, isn't he? Brentford's games are good. I know he hasn't been performing yeah, well, but he's going to play every game. Penalties could easily be him. I think Mooney's could be up there with Fulham's fixtures. You form merchant. At 4.6 million. <laughs> with a, it's, not, it's not just form, it's, it's fixtures as well. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm only not, messing. I'm not sure about Nunes, you know. I've owned really? him. I've owned him for a lot of this season, and he's been. Uh, I don't know when Jota's back and Diaz is around. Does His he goal play every assist game? record per game is fantastic. You can't argue with it. Yeah, it is. But does he play? Does he play every game? Enough. Ten I think goals, he's ten pretty assists. much nailed. Have you seen G- Gakpo's been awful? I know Jota's going to come back and might take minutes, but I don't think you'll take it from him from centre forward very often. I'm going to go Harland, Watkins, Nunes. Okay. Yeah. Kun, is Kunya another one or is that too wild to go for a Wolves striker? I worry a bit with a player back from injury like that. Mm. You know, I, I don't I don't know how he's going to slot back in. What have Wolves really got to kind I'm of I'm not sure he for. would get penalties back. Maybe ne- penalties Neto's out as well and Neto's like their main creative threat, isn't he, on the, on the left? Mm. Yeah. I don't know. Hoy- Hoyland, a few people mentioning Hoyland um, in the chat. He was great, wasn't he, before his injury? Yeah. Yeah, yeah he was. Mm. Top yeah. score though. Mm. I don't know, can't see it. Uh, just to read out some stats for this in case you're interested. Nunes is top over the season in terms of XG on Penit per 90, 0.94. That's ahead of Haaland in 0.91. Uh, and he's alluded to it quite a few times. Nicholas Jackson is in fourth for forwards, 0.73. That puts him right up against you know, the best in the, in the league across all positions as well. Isak's obviously really popular, uh, 0.69. And if you are considering Muniz, uh, he is just behind Solanke over the season. Uh, 0.57, which isn't bad for a 4.6 million uh, asset. Uh, Tony, your mate, Andy, right down in 25th. 0.45. Another one of your mates. <laughs> it's like oh. a little gang, little gang of Gordons and Moonlight. Yes. <laughs> He's 25th, obviously missed six months and the fixtures have not, I, I wouldn't say have been that kind to him since he's come back, but the fixtures are quite nice now until mm. the end of the season, really. Yeah, but he yeah. doesn't have a double. That's the other thing. So uh, I think if you've got him at the moment, he, if you've got other fires you've got to put out, he's a fine hole because obviously he's on pens as well. So, yeah. Uh, Greg Frost says, anyone want to take note of these top three, four predictions that he wins? Uh, he's going for Isak, Hoyland and Haaland. Yeah, let us know. Top three Scoring forwards between now and the end of the season. And then uh, if I remember at the end of the season, I will uh, work out who it is. And if anyone wins, I'll send them a special prize. Not sure what that is yet either. Not sure they want that, mate. No, yeah. it depends. How would you make that sound so sinister? <laughs> I know. Depends. I'll Spe- send them a, a special, special prize. prize. <laughs> it's a load of Manscaped products, obviously. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at some predictions then for the week ahead. The predictions have a whole new level of meaning now the fantasy challenge is here because our, our predictions could directly influence who people buy ahead of their wow. uh, weekly free hit teams there you go. Should make them even worse yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. should make them, that, that's the other thing about content around challenge aren't you? you're competing on one week versus everyone else surely you just want to beat everyone else you don't want anyone else to go anywhere near the team no, you're picking, right? no <laughs> you, you have to chuck in a couple of really crap names yeah. just to try and sway people yeah. well that's why my predictions are terrible on purpose there you go guys <laughs> Sure. I've predicted terrible every week, Luke. Not on purpose. So I <laughs> too much. Uh, our predictions are pretty similar, actually. This this week, there's a, there's a couple of uh, slight differences. But Newcastle, West Ham, we've all gone for a Newcastle. Oh no, we haven't. I haven't. I've gone for a Newcastle draw. I've gone for two all. You both gone for a, a two one. Yeah, I've, Newcastle. I don't know. I think I, I'm I'm not going to 
be predicting too many wins for them, I don't think, between now and the end of the season. I think they're just dumb and they've got some injuries and player stats like Gordon aren't that impressive. I think a lot of people going for Isak are going to be disappointed. I'll say that mm. right now. I don't think he's a stay fit and I don't think Newcastle are that good. Uh, I think I think the fitness one is valid, but I think when he's on the pitch, he, he generally performs and the games mm. are good enough. I think that's brave to say he'll just be bad. Who else is going to score? If it's not Gordon or Isak, who's going to score the points? I think people are going... I just think there's going to be better options in, in the forward and mm. midfield. Fair positions that's, that's, that's what I thought uh, Bournemouth Everton I've gone for a 1-0 and you've gone for a 1-0 Luke you've gone for a 1-1 Semenyo we haven't really talked about him is he someone that people could be bringing in Andy no good <laughs> <laughs> no basically no I think if it I, I don't know why people would be bringing Semenyo in right now I think if you if you want a Bournemouth striker that badly you go Solanke <laughs> but the, the, the medium to long term I wouldn't be getting Semenyo right now good not going to bother asking. He's you, fine like, to hold, but the yeah. window's kind of passed, doesn't it? Because yeah. you would have got him yeah. for the games before. Yeah. And you just go for Moon is right. If you're getting a four point five, four point six, that's it. It's probably yeah. the better one to go for. Uh, Chelsea Burnley three one. Chelsea. I've gone for uh, Andy and Luke. Gone for a two nil. I was at the start of the podcast saying I don't think Burnley are going to concede five goals, and I've gone for the most goals for Chelsea in this match. We've got to be considering Palmer for captain, haven't we, Luke? He's definitely in the conversation. Yeah, hundred percent. I don't have, like I said, I don't have any argument with it. I think Sun, Palmer, and Salah are all close enough where you can go with your gut this week. Yeah, Andy, mm. any? I mean, you and Palmer, you're probably benching him this week, aren't you? Yeah, I'm benching him this week. Yeah, <laughs> going to play Doughty instead. No, it's, uh, yeah, I, th- I think Palmer's such a great shout because he's on pens as well, and he obviously creates so much for that Chelsea team. So, yeah, I think I think like Luke's just said there, I think they're they are all very close. If if you fancy going Palmer. You know, he's probably going to be the one out of the three of them that's below 100% EO. So, mm. or I don't, I don't think Salah will be actually, but um, yeah, I think he's a great shout still. Just for context, you benched Palmer against Luton, was it? And he got yes, 17, 18. He got 18, 18 uh, points. I'd like to add that I did as well, and I remind you, as you were telling me to bench him and play Solanke, the same yeah. as Mark, and that's why Thank I you. kicked off for about two weeks about do you have, that. Do you have proof? Uh, well, unless you delete it, it. yes <laughs> <laughs> quickly quickly deleted I did I did make it up to him and captained him the next two weeks and he got me two hauls he did, so I, yeah. I've forgiven him actually he had, he had a good early kick off home game the next game didn't he and mm. that would be yeah, yeah fair enough uh, Forest Palace I've gone for a 1-1 in this uh, Luke's gone for a 2-2 and you've gone for a Forest win 2-1 mm. Ilang, I guess that, is that the Elanga bias what's that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I forest at home. I don't think they're too bad at home. And again, I'm, I'm not sure what Crystal Palace are going to uh, going to be away from home yet. So yeah, I've gone for a two-one Forest. Yep, uh, Sheffield United Fulham. I've gone for two 0 uh, You both have gone for a two-one. Interesting. You, neither of you gone for the clean sheet in that. That obviously makes Robinson and Castagna less appealing uh, for you. But two goals. Moon is probably involved in at least one of those. Uh, just kind of boosts his appeal uh, this week, but. He's probably Moon is is probably the only one you're going to be getting, isn't he, from Fulham? Maybe Robinson, but probably not. Because you're probably going to go for Augusto or or someone else. Um, but I, I do like the Moon is pick. Spurs Luton. This is an interesting one though, and we've we've gone slightly different on this. I, I've gone for a four one. Luke's gone for a four one, uh, a four nil, and Andy, you've gone for a, a two one. So a bit of a lower scoring mm. match. Interesting. Me, me and Luke have gone for the most goals because we're both probably going to be on song captain this week. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. I think, I don't know. I think I've just maybe cooled it a little bit on the, my expectation from the game. But obviously all the stats allude to the fact that Luton are, you know, incredibly bad defensively. And obviously they're playing away from home as well, which which doesn't help. And Spurs at home are obviously quite good. But yeah, I've just kind of tempered expectations a little bit on it, I think. Yeah, Rob, who I was alluding to earlier, has got Spurs down for 3.15 and Luton for 1. So 3-1 on mm. average looks the most likely result, which is in between everything that we've put. But I, I I just can't see anything other than Spurs scoring multiple goals in this game. We said that last week, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> F- F- Fulham, Fulham, Fulham at home are, which were you know you look at it with context, you think okay that was maybe a trickier game than we gave them credit for. Whereas Luton are statistically the worst defense in the league. So if they don't score one or two goals in that game, I think that is a, a bigger shock than it was them not scoring against Fulham. This is football. Anything can happen on the day, isn't it? But if it goes as expected, Spurs should mm. they should bat they should bat Luton. At the end of the day, the odds yeah. are there for a reason. The bookies don't lose money very often. That's what should happen, whether it does or not. Is another yep. another thing. 
Uh, Villa Wolves, obviously quite a hard one to predict because it's the uh, the West Midlands derby match. Uh, I've gone for a 2-1 Villa. Uh, so is Andy. Luke with the 3-1 as well. Three goals for for Villa. Yeah, I just think they're really good. I know they've lost players and it's it's not been as great recently, but um, I just really like them. I think they're a really good team and I think they'll they'll manage fine. I think they'll be okay. But Would you be buying 8 Nori this week then? I mean, I wouldn't fancy him for a clean sheet. No, mm. it potentially plays in the. He's been playing in the front three every now and then. I was thinking the Coventry game, yeah, maybe. Yeah. So uh, yeah, he's a he's a fine buy, but I wouldn't buy him specifically for this game. Afterwards, it's fine because he's who I'm looking to maybe buy this week because I'm thinking of the short, you know, to medium mm. term, rather rather than just like one week. Like I'll get Gusto for example, then he hasn't got the double in in 34. Yeah, so I'd get no, I think. Game. I think that's fine. I just, I mean, you'd expect Villa to score at home, wouldn't you? They're, they're two point one on Rob T just for. Mm. Um, interest and we've all gone around that as well so yeah Villa, Villa probably score yep Andy can you stop flashing up comments praising you please <laughs> <laughs> I was tempted to bring up that question for Luke again yeah <laughs> have, you got, have you got it pinned have you, have, yeah I have yeah have you good excellent uh, Brentford United have all gone for the same the same score in this all gone for 2-1 uh, across the board what do you reckon about my Garnacho in for Saka move Andy is that a uh, too much. I, I don't. I don't hate it. I, I expect mm. United to score more than Arsenal next week, so I, I don't hate it. And Garnacho's been quite effective in what he does, but obviously Sack is on penalties. He only needs a, a one oh. thing to happen in that game, isn't it? So, and and he's yeah. I I, I don't hate it. I think Garnacho's having a really good season, uh, and he could. I, I expect United to score against Brentford. Yeah. It's just whether. I mean, we've all put Arsenal to score against City. Uh, so it's rude to the point, isn't it? I think that's, get it? That's one of the reasons why I don't play Garnacho because the the players that I've been, you know, um, playing over him have, have got you know free kicks, penalties, maybe corners, even in tougher games. Whereas Garnacho only really has the the open play threat. Mm. But yeah, he's being effective uh, from it. Um, yeah, Luke, what would you do? Sacro Garnacho, who scores more points this week? Mm, I, <laughs> I want to sit on the fence. You're not uh, allowed that... to sit on the fence. <laughs> I think, I think, to be honest, they both score around the same amount of points. I, I think Garnacho is fine to play this week. Look, at the end of the day, like Saka, people always do this. I'm like, oh, I'm scared. Is Saka? He's high owned. He's playing away to Man City, like an outside extreme bad luck where he gets a couple of penalties, probably. Oh, yeah, but I'm full You're probably of bad gonna, luck. Have you seen? Like, you might, you you might score a goal. He might get. He might get up to like <laughs> seven, eight points. Even if Garnacho <laughs> blanks, the difference is like six. Then it's not the end of the world. Like you don't need to be super terrified of it. On your predictions or whatever, on your projections, can you put in that as is making the decision? Because <laughs> yeah. that will change it a lot. <laughs> they have that in a field review this season. Yeah. Just, yeah. Variance has gone up oh. through the roof, yeah. I, I, used to, I used to think this was a game of skill, but this season is just so confirmed to me 90% luck. It's all luck, yeah. <laughs> I'd play Garnacha. I'd play Garnacha. Okay. And... Oh, good. Oh, thanks. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Uh, Liverpool Brighton, we've all gone a bit different with this. We've all gone for the same result, but different scores. I've gone for 2 1. I think it's going to be tighter than some people are giving us credit for. Uh, and he's gone for a 3-1. Luke, you've gone for a 4-1. We're not going to lose 4-1 to Liverpool. I'll say that right <laughs> now. Okay, you you feel free to say that, my friend. <laughs> no, I don't know. I've got Salah in. I'm kind of hopeful that that, that will be the score. Um, yeah, who knows whether it will be. Rob T's got it 2.65 to 1, so closer to 2-1, 3-1 like you guys. Yeah. Uh, and then the final game, massive game. Can't wait for can't wait for Man City Arsenal on, on Sunday lunchtime. Uh, me and Andy both gone for a 1-1. I think that's it's just don't lose this game. I think for both of those teams, uh, which might you never know how these games are going to go. Obviously, but I just think the focus is going to be on on not losing it. So is if it's kind of one one with fifteen minutes to go, is there really going to be a team that pushes to get the win? It would probably be Arsenal. You'd think that would you know would feel like they need to win that game a little bit more because their fixtures are, are quite tough. But I think they'll they'll play it out for a one all. Uh, Luke, you've just gone for the uh, the machine rump was on two one City. Yeah, Man City at the Etihad. Yeah. They're incredible. I know Arsenal yeah. are very, very good. And like you say, it, who can call this game? It can go anyway. But generally, Man City at the Etihad, they they usually win their game. So that's what I expect will happen. Yep. Predictions League. So we, we keep track of, of all of these. Obviously, if you're a Godfather tier member, uh, you get access to the spreadsheet. Obviously, there's a, a, a promise as a non-creepy prize that will be rewarded to the winner of this <laughs> uh, at the end, which is Lawrence doing incredibly well. 54 a percent success rate, 21 correct scores uh, over the season, which is bettered only by Pratic with 25 correct scores. Uh, amazing. So they're currently in the lead for that. 
Me and Mark made the top 20. I'm down in 13th uh, with my 53% success rate, which I'm really happy with. That's better than I've done in previous seasons. Uh, and Mark just behind me with 51. You have something to say, Andy? Shout, yeah, shout out to Paul, who also has 22. So it also has more than Lawrence. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. My apolo- Don't forget Paul. My apologies, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, excellent stuff. Uh, let's take a quick look at captains. Looking at the, the data this, this week, we've, we've mentioned it's probably between Salah uh, Son and Palmer. Uh, if you're looking at over the last six, Salah's got his goal and assist. Obviously, he had a bit of an injury and, and things like that, but we're expecting him to be back. Um, he's top uh, in terms of the points per 90 because he obviously came off the bench in, in that game and did really well. Uh, Son is uh, next, I think, of those three um, with 7.5 points per 90, which is great. Two goals and three assists in that time. Uh, and then Palmer uh, is a bit further down with one goal and four assists. Andy, your Salah, Luke, your son, I'm son. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah. So For no, now, no I reserve the right to change. Yeah, I'm I, I'm 50 what? 50. <laughs> lock it in, lock it in now. I'm 50 50. That there are, like, Haaland is Haaland and he's at the Etihad, right? I know it's Arsenal, but I think people could captain him if they wanted to. I think the same for Watkins, home to Wolves. I think that he's been very good all season and he's another option. I don't think many people will, but. I, again, I don't think the gap is that massive that mm. you couldn't consider them if you're way, way, way down the ranking. It's just in that scenario, you probably would go end up going for someone like Palmer, right? Who's probably a little bit more um, likely to do well and just just about on the periphery. I mean, there but, are options. I mean, you, you could take a punt with Charleston if you think he's going to be playing up front against Luton. You could go for Isak against West Ham at home. You know, when Haaland isn't the most popular captain, it does give you that scope, doesn't it, to maybe play around a little bit more. Because you know you're not going to get nailed with a 190% EO, you know, captain destroying you. Because it's going to be shared around a bit more. Yeah, yeah, but actually in the weeks where someone's like 200% and you don't own that person and go somewhere else, that's when you're increasing your variance the most. That's the chance when, yes, you probably get battered compared to everyone else. But actually you could rise massively on a huge True. chunk of the field. So I think it, you can argue it that way as well. True. Thanks, Red Frost. I, I like the, the... This is a pretty good table. I like the... Not quite... Going in saying it's a great table, just you know, <laughs> it's it's all right. <laughs> yeah, cheers. We we do what we can. Uh, captain Matrix. This is where you're kind of looking at the main the main kind of captains, uh, and this is where you know Harlan from from Gaming Thirty Two is going to obviously be featuring a bit more for us. Got Palace and then Luton in Thirty Three. Salah Brighton this week. We mentioned some of the other ones in Thirty One. If you don't have Salah, you're going to be you're going to be worried, given that Sheffield United at home. Uh, but you do have Saka versus Luton at home in that week as well. I'm not saying I would want to go without Salah and I'll be making every effort to bring in Salah because that could be 9-0 to Liverpool. Um, but, you know, if you if you did want to put the arm out on someone else, I think Sacred Luton is a pretty good, pretty good option. Do you find that we often big up these one individual 100%. game events and think they're going to absolutely batter them and it just often doesn't fall that way? And I will always remember a minus eight I took for Harry Kane at home to Cardiff a few years ago and he blanked. And it it ripped up my team structure apart. You know, I was so I was just so worried about him in that game. Well, that's kind of what. Like, don't get me wrong, Salah versus Sheffield is clearly the option. If you can get there, you probably should try and make it happen. But if you're getting to the point where you're having to take minus fours, minus eights to yeah. make that happen, you have to question whether it's worth and it. you're it's ignoring not going to be worth it. Yeah, and you're potentially ignoring other problems in your in your team. Yeah, like players that may be injured, defenses that are problematic. Yeah. yeah, you could captain Darwin in that game if he starts. You could captain Saka. Like, yeah, you, you could even end up winning in that scenario. Stranger things have happened. That game, correct me if I'm wrong. That is that is sandwiched in between. Um, is it the FA Cup match they've got after I that? Can't recall all, all that Europe. Much. I'm pretty sure. I think that's. I think it's a midweek game. Let me check before I. Talk absolute rubbish. Uh, they are playing Sheffield United on Thursday, the fourth of April. Yes, and then they have Man United. That's it. They've Man United on the seventh. So obviously, massive game for them away at uh, away at uh, Man United at Old Trafford. There could be some rotation in that in that Sheffield United game. That's where Darwin, I think, becomes maybe a bit more risky. If Salah's not fully over his injury, do they maybe you know drop him for that and and play? Diaz and Gakpo, for example. That's, it's, it's annoying that, that that game is right in the middle of those two games because he's going to play Brighton, he's going to play United. So it's going to be three, three games in a week, essentially, for, for Salah. Yeah, I can't see that, though, because Salah's, you can almost argue, had his rest. Mm. Um, I don't know, maybe, maybe, but I think Salah will, prob- will probably play early withdrawal after battering them 3-0. Yeah, yeah. I think that, that could happen. But 
Um, that could be the case uh, of United he, as well. To be honest. Yeah, Salah misses what like what through through choice anyway. Probably like one Premier League game, game a season, something like that. Yeah. Um, hopefully it's not this one. Yeah. Uh, right, we're at the two hour mark, so we better just finish off with our teams and then a couple of wildcard drafts to mention. Let's talk about my team. I mean, he here you can see my defence that I've been mentioning all all stream. <laughs> Neto in goal, Trippier, Gabriel, Doty. Kerkes and Kabore. That is the oh god, that is the five that I've ended up with. If Trippier's fit, I don't really mind playing Trippier, playing Doty. You haven't Spurs. mentioned that. What well, playing Trippier? <laughs> Thanks, mate. If Trippier's, if Trippier's fit. fit. Well, I, I kind of wanted to play Kerkes, and then you sent me a thing to say he went off injured in his last his last international game. Yeah, I don't know again how much to know uh, to believe in that, but apparently he didn't play due to a minor niggle in the Hungarian game. Why did I not so. just get Zabani like everyone else? Why did I try and be clever and get Kerkes? Anyway, it's going to be a defensive move for me. The rest of my team's fine, I think. Son, Captain, Garnacho, Foden, Palmer, Harlan, Watkins, Solanke. I'm seeing lots of um, wildcards moving to a very similar team. I've got Saka on the bench. It's really just, if I was to wildcard this week, it would just be to sort of defence out. Uh, I don't really need it. I don't know if I mentioned, but if Trippy is fit, then I probably don't need to wildcard because the defence is, <laughs> is good. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so, yeah. Hopefully, it will just be Kirkes or Kabore to Augusto or Van Dyke. I can't afford Van Dyke. It's not going to be him. Someone, you know, a Fulham defender, Chelsea defender, someone like that. Um, that's me. Fairly, fairly easy, I think. I think you're quite down on this team. I think it's fine. Like, you've got loads of good players the there. Team's in the team's fine. Pack. It's just the defence. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the yeah but right. we've said the defenders are... You're unlikely to get many points from it, it no. seems. So you might get away with it. Yeah, I think even if I have to bring in, yeah, even if even if I play Gabriel Doty and and get rid of Trippier for someone, it's it's not it's not completely the, the end of the world. This is yours, Luke. Talk us through it. Um, I mean, Kirk some, is. there he is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that one could cause me some problems if he's hopefully he's fit and he. I suppose even if he's fit, the question mark is whether he'll play the game. Uh, that's what I want to throw to you guys. Do you think he will start that if he's fit? Because Wattara obviously did well, but I felt that they were heavily exposed and almost lost the game as a result of them playing pretty much at left back. So my hope is he would come back in, but maybe I'm that's just what I want to bring to fruition. I, by just, I, just, I just don't know. This is it. I, I agree with you, but I also thought that he wouldn't start. I thought he'd still start with Kirkes in the last game because even though he came off the bench, who was, was it Otaro, did you say? Otaro, yeah. yeah. But the thing yeah. is, I think you can make a tactical argument for that. He came off the bench, did well, and then they obviously had a very easy game as well where they expected mm. to win. I think home to Everton's a different kettle of fish. I think given the choice... Looking for I, a bit would, more balance, maybe. Yeah, well, that's yeah. my hope. But at the same time, I believe there was noise about Aaron's might be back. I know he's more like the right back, but Smith can play left back. So mm. I suppose that's another issue. Um, I may end up having to play Gabriel, but at the end of the day, if I have to play Gabriel, like, yeah, he's probably not going to get points, but we know he's got a bit of a goal threat. Like, it's not the worst case scenario. Yeah. I really don't want to have to play a Stukan if I can get away with it. So that would be good. Um, I suppose I've got a slight benching dilemma in the sense that I've got Sarabia. I think that maybe you could argue play him over Saka. I think it's close because Sarabia is probably on penalties, right? I don't know whether mm. you guys would have it a different way around there, but apart from that, I don't really have many choices, I guess. I suppose Ariola and Ray is a choice. I don't think either of them are going to get a clean sheet, but do you think Ray or Ariola ends up getting more saves, I guess? Oh, these are all good questions. Yeah. <laughs> I, think I'd play, I think I'd play Ariola over Raya. Okay. What do you think, Andy? Yeah, I think I would, yeah. I think I think you're you're right to be worried about Kirkes. I think he's looked a little bit shaky in the last couple of weeks. I, Thanks, I don't mate. think Utara. I don't think Utara is the one that's maybe because obviously Utara is a winger, isn't he? And he's he played. He came on like you said when they needed the goals. Mm. But I, I think Kirkes is tough. Like I, I, don't, I, I have no idea whether he is going to start, which is obviously not a good position to be in. Mm. Sarabia though is another one. Like is he on pens? Because like it, it seems to be so many. But it seems to be so many different Wolves players that have taken penalties this year, even though the other players have been on the pitch, if that makes sense. No, it's, it's Huang, Kunya and Sarabia. And when Sarabia's I suppose, yeah, the, that's true. And yeah. Huang's out, Kunya might be back, I don't know. But um, yeah. Sarabia's pretty confident. He's got a really good record on them anyway. I'd play Sarabia yeah. over Saka. Yeah, Would you? maybe. He's, he's maybe. a bit more fun, isn't he, as well? And Like, <laughs> yeah. like, like you said, Luke, it's Man City. Points are more fun. Luke. Yeah, I was going to say, Az has had a lot of fun this year. <laughs> Put it into review. Uh, Az has recommended to Rabbit. Well, they're both like 4.1 on review, Az. So this is where I, you know, it's not making the choice for me. I've got to use my own brain, so I'm kind of screwed. 
I would say there's more chance of Wolves scoring a couple of goals against Villa than there is Arsenal scoring a couple of goals against City. I'm sure this problem is only specific to me and your listeners do not care. So let's move on. I disagree. I'm... I think they all I think they all care. I think the benching of Saka though is a dilemma for quite a few people this this week because people are looking for an excuse to bench a 65% EO player. Um and you know if you've got a player like Sarabia or Gonacho or anyone even remotely half decent you'd be tempted to to bench them. Well, so, would you would it make a difference to you if we get it confirmed Walker's out we know Stones is out Akanji came off with a knock I think Edison's even got a slight not I think most of these are going to end up playing but if yeah, we had true. perhaps usually pretty good I don't know whether it will be this week because it's versus Arsenal it's saying whether a player is in or out um, would that make a difference? Well, there's, I mean, there's a, is that the real FPL Harry? I can never even tell. Um, but either real or fake FPL Harry, please give us a, a me reference. Uh, it says Gordon, like Gordon over Saka or, or Foden. I'd play Gordon over yeah, Saka. Yeah, I'd play yeah. Gordon over Saka Gordon's as well. Gordon's yeah. yeah. Yeah, I probably would. Uh, Andy, let's take a look at yours. Your wildcard team from a few weeks ago. Yeah, so uh, Neto and Zabani at the back. So I'm hoping for a Bournemouth clean sheet. Gabriel, uh, a doggy. Palmer, Bowen, Bowen will be Salah, uh, Son, Elanga, Saka, <laughs> and then Watkins and Tony up top. So I'm playing Saka, but I'm playing him over Doughty, Morris, and obviously Reggie on. What uh, a bench. And then, and then Ariola on the bench as well, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm playing Saka and Gabriel, which uh, is probably not going to be what I want it to be this week, but you never know. I mean, Gabriel, he's always got, obviously got that attack and threat, and Saka's on pens and... Yeah, we'll we'll see what happens. But I'm feeling okay about majority of this. I feel like the defence is actually, it's got quite some upside compared to a lot of defences I'm seeing at the moment. I mean, as is in particular. But if, uh, <laughs> if 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 I do the bow and the Salah, I've got Palmer, Son and Salah, which even just having those three, I think is quite a differential this week. I, I think there's quite a few people scrambling to try and get the Salah. So yeah, no, I'm, it feels okay. Yeah, no, I think it looks, looks all right. Tony's a... a- Kind of a nice differential for you as well this season. You know what's going to happen though? Bowen's going to bang because everyone's selling him for Salah. He's going to go yeah, off this week. Potentially. And obviously we've just seen Newcastle defence is one of the worst in the league at the moment. Tony against Man United, I don't feel that bad against, to be honest. Mm. I feel like, you know, he, he can do it against anybody because he's on pens and he's a good player. But yeah, it's um, Haaland's a big one. If Haaland goes big against Arsenal, obviously I don't oh, know. Oh yeah, him, you've so got no Haaland's. I didn't even, yeah. I didn't even clock that. Didn't even is this the that. first time this season outside of injury that you've not owned him? No, uh, no, I can't remember actually. I've got, I know I've gone against him for captaincy a couple of times, and it's actually worked out each time. But uh, yeah, no, we'll see what happens. Obviously, oh, I didn't own him last week. Harlan Hatrick, come on, come on, <laughs> help me catch yeah. up some some places. Yeah, no, it looks good. Uh, nice, interesting. Yeah, the Adogi shout as well. I think people with with those two or three Spurs players, uh, I'm I'm jealous of. Uh, so yeah, if you've got Madison's on, uh, Richarlison as well is is a fun one. Let's get. Um, I know we're. <laughs> We're gonna be this. This could well be the longest black box ever uh, that you're you're both on. I just want to quickly touch on these wild cards because you you quickly uh, put them together for me when I when I asked. And this is the one you put together. I tasked you with creating yeah. us a wild card uh, as if you had no chips remaining. And just is, wild is card. Yeah. With. Just a wild card. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the one. Uh, if you only had your wild card, yeah, no free hit. So. I have actually, even though I was saying it earlier, I've, I've, I've got the two Spurs in there. So, I've, sorry, I'll run through it. So, it's, it's Petrovic in goal, Gusto, Cher, Odoggi, Palmer, Salah, Son, Garnacho, Isak, Haaland and Darwin. And then you've got Kelleher, Gabriel, Saka and Lascelles on the bench. This is with zero in the bank based on my budget. And I'm at about 100 and... I, don't, I can't remember what it was actually because obviously the selling values. But most of this is pretty locked to be perfectly honest. I think you've got to have those those... Uh, Chelsea boys in there, even though they don't have the double in, in game week 34. I think this gives you six or seven for the double. And then obviously you've got to make a few moves to get to that point. But the thing is, if you don't have your free hit, it's really hard mm. to go full on for that double game week because then you've got to try and get to the double game week in 37 as well. And you've got to try and target the doubles in 34 and 35. So if you're wildcard in now, personally, I think if you've only got wildcard left, I would probably leave it until 34, build for 34, dead end, and then wildcard in 35. I don't think wildcarding now without a free hit is is a great option personally, unless your team looks very different to what mm. I've seen some teams looking like. So I think the Arsenal you've got to keep. I think Kelleher and Petrovic is definitely the way I'd be going for, for goalkeepers. Palmer, Salah, Son, Saka, 
kind of obviously buys itself. It's between Garnacho and Gordon in the middle, but obviously I've got Isak share and Lascelles there. But Lascelles could you know easily be Bradley or whatever. So yeah, most of this I was quite happy with. I made this in about fifteen minutes, so there are definitely some tweaks you could make. But like I said, if it was me, I think I'd be dead ending into thirty four and then and then wild carding out of that. Person. Ben me, huh? Ben me. <laughs> Forget. <sighs> I feel Harry. Come on, that was for you. Get in the chat. That's good. Uh, Brilliant. No, no Watkins double Chelsea defence. What could go wrong? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Be fine, mate. Uh, Luke, this is the one you put together. This is the more common strategy uh, which we're seeing, which is if you've got a free hit in 34, uh, and then you're probably looking at bench boosting in 37. And you can see with this just the, the difference that you, you go compared to someone who you know has, has got the free hit chip, uh, hasn't got the free hit chip left. Yeah, I thought I'd include Reguilon just for banter, to be honest. But he is, <laughs> he is actually useful in, I think it's game week 33 or something. You can play him. He's got a really good game. And then after the double... Um, where you would free hit in 34, he's actually quite useful as well. So someone who can just sit there. Um, and he's be useful on the bench boost in 37, I think it is as well. Mm. So, he's yeah. I useful mean, until he gets sent off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. He can't be less good, well, less useful than what he was for us, right? It's nearly impossible. Um, yeah, I think uh, Burn, is, Burn is just, it could be Eddie Newcastle. Defender. I think he's about the only one who's fit at the moment, but ideally I'd I'd pick someone else there. Um do, is Shah actually out for the season? Or was that Botman? Sorry, I've confused. Botman's one of them. out. Bot, Botman's Botman. out for the season. Right. I think Shah maybe was a doubt or have I made that up? But I think he, if you could get Shah, you would pick him. Yeah, fine. He's just gone up in price as well in the game. Right, okay, okay. Um, yeah, but Darwin, Isak, Harland, that's the front line that I, I think I said would probably hopefully score the most amount of points towards the, towards the end of the season. You free hit in 34, it's straightforward. Um, yeah, I think the teams are relatively similar. It's just a few minor changes. You can kind of target the immediate fixtures more than you can, mm. um, obviously without having a wild card there. Just to read your team out for the podcast listeners, Luke, because, uh, you know, you, you, you still, you're not learning. You're not learning these things. Sorry, mate. Do you want me to do it? Uh, you can do it. Yeah, why not? It's Petrovic and goal with Edison. Uh, expensive combo there. Mm. I, I want to add that I, I put this through review as well, so it isn't all just me, and I banned a lot of the Man City defenders. It did want to pick all those, and I just wasn't comfortable <laughs> picking them. Also banned De Sassi just because I've got a personal vendetta against him. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm the only one that likes De Sassi. Uh, maybe I'm being harsh. He has had a, a few good games. He actually turned into a, like a world beater against Haaland, annoyingly, when we needed mm. him to score. I think when he was a triple captain, yeah, and outside that. of that, he was yeah, yeah. diabolical. But yeah, uh, Porro and Yudogi. Double up on Spurs defence at the back. Newcastle defender, but it's currently Burn. We've got Sun, Foden, Salah, Palmer in midfield. Uh, we've got Nacho as the other midfielder on the bench. Darwin, Isak and Haaland up top. Other defender on the bench is Gabriel and Reguilon. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. I mean, I mentioned there, there being differences, but Darwin, Isak, Haaland, Son, Salah, Palmer, Garnacho, they were in both of your teams. Mm. Uh, it's just uh, it's just that Foden spot. You've gone for him and, and Andy, and Andy didn't, but... Yeah, yeah. I think outside the Arsenal game, his immediate games are pretty good, Foden. So yeah. I, I like that. Yep. Yeah, nice. Right, so we're coming to the end. Let's just cover the Black Box Leagues quickly. Uh, congratulations to Sundeep Jaswal, who is top uh, with a massive 21 points this, this week. Uh, 1975. He's uh, first in the world as well. So when number one in the world is getting 21 points, you'd normally be a bit concerned. But actually, that was a pretty decent score, uh, as we know. Uh, Richard Smith is in second, LVT in third. Joe Casti in fourth and John O'Shea in fifth. Uh, Chai in sixth with Christian Loris. Uh, Loris, Lar can't even say that. Christian Larish in seventh. Uh, Mike Dobson in eighth. Uh, Chris McMillan in ninth. And Matt Lovett in tenth. Uh, the I've, I've finally, the highlight of my season, uh, overtaken Liesl playing in her first ever season in, in FPL. <laughs> uh, the apprentice to Mark and I uh, this year. Overtaken her score of 19 with my massive 24 points. I'm now 17 points behind Ryan, who I'm looking to to finish second in this league because there's absolutely no way I'm overtaking Mark, who's about 130 points ahead of me, which is embarrassing. Uh, Godfather Tier League, Richard Smith is leading that, 1924. We've got Pratik in second, he's doing well in that, and the Predictions League. Conor Gray in third, Tom Gold in fourth, Avi Frutzer in fifth, Mr. Mark Southerns himself, uh, who sadly can't be with us tonight, but hoping to get him back soon. Dick Baker in seventh, Nathan Joblin in eighth. Chris in ninth and Stuart Thompson in tenth. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Two hours fifteen. I think it's. Uh, I think this probably is a record for for Black Box. William Brownley, though I haven't forgotten you. Uh, one for both of you. But just before we finish, um, who would you own? Should now at the end of the season. Own KDB Salah or Son, uh, or Son now and next week. 
get both. It's got to be Salah, isn't it? Um, you lost so, me in the question already. Well, I'm guessing he's saying, oh, who would you pick out of the three to own going forward? KDB, Salah well, or Son? Um, or Salah. Yeah. Salah, Andy? Yeah, I'm just trying to... Yeah, obviously KDB's not a non... Question no, there. I but wouldn't pick him if you. Yeah. Or Son now <laughs> next week get both. I mean, I wouldn't. Go on, mate. Oh, sorry, I was going to say. I'm assuming that would what be for a hit for Salah. Then is that what it is? Like, is he saying, do I wait one week to get Salah, or do I get him this week? Because if it's for a hit, I'm, I'm assuming you just get yeah, keep Son and get Salah next week. But I don't know. I mean, if you can get both, get both. I don't I mean, know. I don't I, get the question. He owns, Ke- he owns sure. Kevin De Bruyne right now. I've got it now. He owns Kevin De Bruyne at the moment. Should he get uh, Salah? Oh, oh, yes. Got you. Or, so should he get yeah. Salah or Son? Yeah. I so thought it was, I own KDB, Salah and Son. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah no, I, I, I thought who's better than all of them. Yeah. I wouldn't touch Kevin De Bruyne with a barge pole, but if he's got him, I would go to, I would personally go to Salah because it's over the two, three weeks. I think he's probably the best in the short term. And then the double's great. And uh, yeah. Sun will become an issue eventually, so I don't yeah. know what chips he's got left. If you, if you can do KDB to Salah or Son this week, I'd do it. If I was to pick one of those, it'd be Salah. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely stuff. Right, I'm going to let you both go. Thank you so much. Impressive staying power. Um, oops, no go away for Harry. We've answered your question already. Uh, gentlemen, I think the three of us worked quite well tonight. Enjoyed it. <laughs> Good pod. I'm normally in bed by now. <laughs> Thanks, mate. I, li- I like the surprise in your voice there as well. Cheers. Yeah, for I, thought, that. I thought it was going to be, a, I it was be an absolute disaster, but here we are, and it's been it's been all right. Uh, no, thanks, thanks both. Really appreciate you. Uh, you both coming on uh, tonight in the absence of Mark. Thank you to everyone watching. We, we, I mean, we had a thousand watching, you know, pretty consistently throughout. So we must have been doing uh, something right, except for when people start talking about my my beard and hair at one point. Don't pretend you didn't like that. As... Why do you think I flashed up all the comments? Obviously, I <laughs> absolutely loved it. Uh, but no, it's been really good. Hopefully get you both back on soon. Hopefully Mark can join uh, up with us again uh, as well. Um, but yeah, good night. And we will see you all next time. Cheers. Bye-bye.